It's always a good day when that song kicks us off, dude. How are you? Uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, just, you know, been been grinding it out on creating the videos and everything. Plus, I got my regular job that, you know, I work 40 hours a week as an engineer. So, you know, I, it, yeah. it's just always busy here. Ah, that's insane, dude. I am also, like, grinding like crazy. I've got, uh, I'm trying to produce, like, one video a month over on my channel. Plus, I'm gonna be gone all summer doing stuff, and so like I'm trying to early pre-produce videos for that time. Plus, I've got that amazing charity stream that I know everybody loves hearing me talk about. But like, it's not even a stream. Sorry, the charity thing. We did a roll for initiative. We played uh, like 30, 35 hours of Tales of the Valiant. Um, that starts coming out in June, so I'm editing just just hundreds of hours of, of footage to try to get that together. Um, it's man, life is insane. But uh, I'm so very fortunate to get to be this busy and get to do so many cool things and make so many people happy. It's it's genuinely wonderful. Um, hi, everybody. Tuning into the show today. Uh, this is uh, the Sunday show after dark, uh, which it, it is dusk here in, in uh, uh, my hometown of Oklahoma. Um, and uh, we're, we're, we're coming up on the dark. So we'll just we'll sit here and just talk until darkness falls. I'm sure somewhere in the world it's dark. This joke is stupid. Uh, I, I don't know what the <laughs> protocol is for this because we've never, I've never done this show before and it's kind of a new thing. Um, but as far as I know, we're going to be taking calls until there are no more calls to take or at least until the time comes when all of us have like hard cutoffs for a while. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sunday, Sunday night can't go too late, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, so we've got, uh, we've got, Already some people starting to call in, but I want to remind everybody that the lines are open for theists, especially. We always prioritize theist calls. So if you have a question uh, or a comment or an argument for God, uh, if you want to talk about biblical slavery and how you think it's cool and different than than just, you know, regular slavery. Um, if you're a, a creationist or a transphobe or some other weird thing that we disagree with on this channel, this is your chance to, to call and talk to I, uh... live actual atheists. Hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty uh, adept at, at the historical conversation concerning like Christianity and and stuff of that nature. So um, I I recently got into some hot water on on Twitter for because uh, it was on uh, Easter day Easter Sunday. I put out a tweet yeah. that says there's no historical evidence that proves Jesus was crucified, and people lost their their minds over it. And so um, that's been fun to deal with over there on on Twitter. <laughs> or X or whatever it's called this week. I don't recommend Twitter, period, <laughs> for anybody. Um, I put out a thing on that day because uh, it was it was you know Easter moves around all the time, um, and so I put out a thing saying it's so many holidays. It's International Trans Day of Visibility. It was International Anesthesia Tech Day, Inter International Dance Marathon Day, International Hug a Medievalist Day, National Bunsen Burner Day. That's a big one for me. Um, National Clams on the Half Shell Day, National Crayon Day, and National Farm Workers Day. But most of all, there's one day that moves around every year, and it's really important that we call it out. Uh, and it's National Baked Ham with Pineapple Day uh, was that day. Um, and I mentioned all that, and that was the whole bit. It was just like, hey, there's a lot of holidays today. And, and you know, because everyone was talking about, like, there. I, I actually heard people say that Biden made Easter Trans Day. And it's like, no. It, that's always always March 31st and Easter moves and that one doesn't and here they align. Um, I made that post to joke about that and I had a Christian lady get in my comment section very mad that I was being disrespectful because I didn't mention Easter. She's like, it's also Easter. And we're like, yeah, that's that's the whole bit. And she's like, well, yeah, you atheists get mad when we disrespect you, but here you are disrespecting me. Me not mentioning Easter 
isn't disrespectful to Easter. I just didn't mention it. <laughs> and like, it, and that really, I feel like that's kind of the whole thing, especially with Christianity in this country, is like this this idea that if you are not directly benefiting me, that means you're hurting me. If you are not giving, de paying deference to my religion, then you are attacking it. And it's like, no, we can just not participate. You don't have to be special. And like, that's such a weird thing because when you're in a position of power and authority and privilege, equality feels like oppression. And I think like mm -hmm. Christians in this country really, really embody that a lot. Um, it's, it's, oh, it's so fucking rough, dude. Uh, but yeah, we've got, uh, we've got plenty of lines open. All this is to say, we've got lines open for theists and I'm, I'm excited to get some callers in. Um, but before we do, uh, we have some announcements, some things that we, we have to get through really quickly, um, uh, that, uh, Jimothy Snow himself has asked me to, 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 to speak about. Number one is that we have a Patreon. You should check that out. <laughs> um it's pretty cool it's it's pretty interesting thing you can go to our patreon and become a patron um scientifically speaking uh joining our patreon makes you 100 percent more of a member of our patreon immediately and that's really cool um so if you want to work on that and improve improve that part of your life then that's how you do that uh also uh jimmy is doing a new show that he just announced it's called live on the line um, which will be available to our paid patreon members and youtube channel members only um and basically how it works is that Jimmy will be hosting the show. Uh, he's going to call us, the hosts, the other hosts here. He's just going to call us out of the blue while we're in the middle of living our lives off the clock and just being people. He's going to interrupt that um, and, and immediately start asking us questions and have us now be participants on this game show. Um, and so uh, the, 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 it will the podcast as a whole will have all sorts of segments, surprise calls and guests, to colleagues, off the cuff conversations. I'm reading the thing he said here. Um, it'll have a quiz segment. This is the exciting part where we, the guest, will do a quiz on behalf of a randomly selected patron, a patron, for a chance for that patron to win cool prizes, merch store stuff, coupons to the merch store, whatever else. Um, and then there will be. Uh, you know, other Patreon exclusive content in there, like comments and, and, and things like that, that he's doing. But like the biggest thing is that he's going to call us and have us participate in this quiz show that he's putting together, which when he was talking to me about it, um, we, we likened it to wait, wait, don't tell me on NPR because, you know, we're playing on behalf of the, the, the guests that we've chosen the, the, the patron, the patron wins a, a, a present. If we do well, I don't know why he didn't call it. Wait, wait, don't call me. You know what I'm saying? Like that would have been a great name. That's that's. Uh, but here we are with you know with me being right and Jimmy being wrong yet again. Uh, but anyway, if uh, I just want to start the show by saying if you are if you like this channel and you want to support it, joining the Patreon is a great way to do that. Um, and if you want to see more content and get more, you know, uh, 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 watch and listen to more stuff of your favorite hosts being your favorite hosts, the Patreon is also a great way to do that as well. So please consider becoming a patron. It's a pretty cool thing to do. Um, and uh, 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 we got all sorts of other still stuff coming up on this channel, like the fundraiser coming up and all sorts of other things. Uh, we got uh, other uh, shows, which I should read. We've got um, on Monday, we've got Skep Talk uh, with uh, Shannon Q and Aaron Adair. Uh, on Tuesday, we've got Chewed Gum with Eva Frain and Alyssa. Um, on Wednesday, uh, we've got The Hang Up with uh, Matt Dillahunty and Stacy. On Thursday, we've got Takis, the Transatlantic College Show with Katie and Josie. Um, on the Sunday, we, uh, we've got the Sunday Show with E was Framed and me. I'll be on that one. So, so stay tuned to all the shows this week uh, and watch all of them and enjoy all of them. Oh, I, you, you can whether or not you enjoy them is up to you, but definitely watch them um, and consider uh, consider Patreoning. I think that's everything that I was supposed to say, uh, I'm bad at my job. <laughs> and I'm trying very hard to remember all of the things I was supposed to tell all of you. Uh, John, do you have anything before we proceed to, to, to take calls? Um, not really. I mean, I'm going to be hosting Skep Talk on the 29th. So that's, you know, right. coming at here at the end of the month, but, uh, you yeah. know, that's, that's you know, nothing anybody needs to be worrying about right now, obviously. 
Not that anybody <laughs> would worry about it at all, but uh, that's the only thing that I really got coming up as far as the line goes. And then, you know, I've just got my normal stuff uh, going on on my channel, which I try to post like two videos a week over there. So I keep myself pretty busy. Right on. Uh, I've got uh, uh, on the 20th, I'll be doing a Cuz I Wanna uh, with my friend Roxanne. She was a, a, friend, a, a co-host of mine on Skeptalk a little while back. Um, she just finished her PhD. Uh, and so we're going to get on there. We're going to talk about all sorts of cool stuff, uh, uh, mainly psychology and women's issues and things. Uh, and then we've also got uh, on the 22nd, so two days after that, I'll be doing Skeptalk as well um, with my friend Morticia, who's a, a microbiologist. And we're going to talk about microbiology. So uh, call in uh, on those days or tune in at least on those days and hear us ramble about science and statistics and things because I know everybody loves math. Um, we've still got lines open for theists. So theists, please call in. That number is 720-619-2288. Uh, but we're going to start with William, who is not a theist. Um, all right, I don't think so. Um, pronouns they, them, calling in from Arkansas. Uh, they're asking, is poetic or flowery language hindering effective communication? William, you are on the line. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing well. How are y'all? Uh, doing good. Uh, doing really well, dude. That's good. I watched you, uh, uh Forrest on, uh, AXP. I uh, watched all your wigs. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> yeah, I was so bored with wigs. that call and I literally I just have a pile I of wigs know. over here next to me because I was I was just so bored with that call, dude. I yeah. But um I actually called into that to that show about this topic and you know, luckily here you are. Uh and you know, Godless Engineer as well. So yeah, it worked. Um so basically my Jesus, question is, Jesus arranged like, it. <laughs> no, maybe uh but no um my question is built on like okay so you know we say things like this is the law of uh like i did the most common one the second law of thermodynamics but like the mm -hmm. term law itself is uh you know it comes with the idea of quote a law giver uh you know and while i am i understand it y'all understand it I feel like it's also kind of giving that sort of, I don't want to say leeway for BS to, it's just another avenue for BS to kind of not necessarily argue disingenuously, but basically just kind of stick their head in the sand and go, la, 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 you said it's a law, therefore there has to be a lawgiver, ha, 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 kind of thing. And I, I don't know I mean, if there's a way to help that with that. Oh, I, I, w I was just going to say, like, I, I don't think an argument from ignorance because people don't understand, uh, like, I guess, scientifically centered language um, is yeah. really a good argument against anything. Because, you know, when we say law in science, we're talking about something very specifically. And the laws in science um, are created by, by humans. Uh, they're created to describe things yeah. that we you know, observe in reality, obviously, but I mean, um, as far as there being like a law giver in order to, for that law to no, be I, there or the underlying like, I, uh, physical, you know, aspect of reality. Um, I, I think that they just simply, I would explain if, if, if I was in that position, I would explain how they're just not understanding what like a scientific law actually is. I know. Uh, I get that. Um, Maybe there's like a, is there like a better term we could use? One that doesn't come with essentially uh, sort of in the same way the term created needs a creator. Uh, no. You know, is there, no, not really. Yeah, so, <laughs> I didn't think so. so. Th this was, right. So the, the thing is like, it's, it's like the word theory where like, you know, it yeah. obviously means, you know, something, one thing, but when people use it in common parlance, it means something different. And like, and so creationists will yeah. go out of their way, misrepresent and misinterpret this word. Um, the same thing, like you say, yeah. you're, you're absolutely right. If we say laws, I'm like, oh, who made the law? Um, uh, uh, it's, 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 it is just, it's the same thing that like Matt Powell does all the time, where instead of having yeah. an actual argument, it's just the way that yeah. words sound is the argument. 
And like you are now having an issue of etymology, yeah. not an actual a a argument with science. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, I, involving him, it's just funny. Yeah. <laughs> I have no confidence that that is ever going to stop. And so like, if you change the word law to some other thing, like, you know, so, some word that is a brand new word with no other context besides exclusively this thing in science that is only meaning this thing in science, mm. guarantee that some creationist is going to come along and say, well, you change, you know, you, whatever new thing you've discovered or decided to name or whatever like that, that's because of God too. If you don't know how it works, then that's proof that God did it because it's so complex and un, you know it's, uh, it's beyond understanding. If you do know how it works, that's proof God did it because it's so um, immensely uh, intricate and complex and it took us this long to figure it out and we can see the, the fine tuning of the universe and blah, blah, blah. If you can name it, then that's mm. something because God made it so identifiable and, and God works these ways. If you can't name it, that's because mm. God did it and God's mysterious and God's blah, blah, blah. It's um, just a, it's a bag you can't talk that's out of. Fair. So, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's that's I've, all. I've not I've heard, heard a bag you, know. you can't talk out of. <laughs> I've not heard that either, but I like it. I might, I might steal it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, very, yeah. very interesting question uh, that that you had for us there, William. Uh, I'm glad that you called in. Thanks. Yeah, sorry, I was looking at something right. else. I, I apologize. I was distracted a little bit there at the end. Um, but yeah, William, uh, I hope I answered okay. your question. I guess I I'll, I don't want to, you know, uh, uh, completely get sidetracked. No. But uh, nah. yeah, I, I get it. The long and short of it is is unhopeful <laughs> for, for any progress. That's fair. Anyway, That's I hope you have an unfortunate, but I get it. But I get it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, uh, I normally... I, uh, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, I normally take uh, instances like that whenever I'm in a conversation with somebody and they they talk, you know, or they espouse those kind of ideas. I try to take that as an opportunity to try to educate them a little bit about like scientific language or just science in general. Um, so, I mean, I I would see it as an opportunity to try to try try to do that. And and if they immediately reject you, then you know that there's no point in like you know trying yeah. to talk Fair. anything to them you know so i mean i think that th that that would be the best outcome is to try to educate them and if they reject that then there's just no need to continue assume willful ignorance at that point at best yep yeah i always say well i say willful ignorance is actively malicious personally but so um yeah that's probably what i'll do in that scenario <laughs> right on man uh, well, I thank you awesome. so much for calling in. Seriously, I'm gonna jump on to the next one. Uh, but uh, yeah, do call back if you have any other questions. Well, do thanks. Later. Later. Bye bye. They were very nice. Um, I've got. Uh, I'm gonna jump right into Robert. Pronouns he him. Calling him from wiggly armpits and or Washington, uh, who's a theist slash creationist, it says here, uh, wants to talk about abiogenesis and oxygen. Robert, you were on the line. How are you doing today? Hi, Forrest. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my call. Um, so my, my question, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're willing to talk about abiogenesis because uh, evolutionists generally uh, don't know what's going on with abiogenesis. And so my question is, uh, when we talk about um, you know, the, the uh, ability from molecules or, or chemicals to create life, uh, all scientists, they basically say that due to oxidation, uh, you, you can't form life in the presence of oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult to, sure. Okay, so can, can you explain the molecular formula of like say ribose and ATP, which actually has 25% oxygen in them? If oxygen is reduced into you know, water and, and sulfate, uh, uh, sulfur oxides and, and ferrous oxides and other things, how do you get the oxygen in order to create ATP and uh, ribose? And I mean, uh, all the molecules of life that have oxygen in them. You, you know, you can use, you can move molecules and, or sorry, you can move atoms around from molecule to molecule without having it be 
like a free floating atom, right? Like you can you can re so rearrange. That's things. called oxidation, right? When, when oxygen is added to a thing, yeah, it's usually called oxidation. Yeah. Or also yeah, just losing electrons is called oxidation. Or, or a, a a redox reaction when you're basically you're you're moving uh, uh, elect well, electrons re around redox. With oxygen. Yeah, so, so oxygen isn't necessary for re redox just means moving electrons around is basically all that means. Reducing is gaining uh, 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 oxygens, reduction, or, or regain. Sorry, gosh, got me all tangled up here. Reducing is gaining electrons, um, which sounds weird, but it's reducing in charge um, because next electrons are uh, uh, negatively charged, uh, whereas um, uh, 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 oxidation is losing electrons, which is because of the history of the word. So, yeah, uh, uh, what I'm saying is like, it, you can have oxygen in a molecule without necessarily having free floating oxygen to produce that molecule. So like oxygen oh, okay. is so, very, very rare in the universe. Like fr free floating just by itself oxygen is very rare in the universe. There are very few, very rare, very specific ways to make free floating oxygen abiotically. Um, so okay. when so, life so started on this planet... Hold on there. When life started on this planet, there wasn't any free floating oxygen. And the first life wouldn't have used oxygen as a resource that way. The way that we got so much oxygen in the atmosphere on this planet is be about, uh, but, I want to say, two, what, well, two well, and a half. Let me stop you right there for it. I'm not, I'm not talking about, uh, I'm not talking no. about uh, metabolism and oxygen uh, necessary for the, you know, for the use of metabolism. I'm talking specifically about the molecular makeup of, uh, you know, the, you know what the um, molecular formulas are, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. It, You're talking it's, about it's the atoms the that go into molecules. You're talking about atoms yeah. that go into things like ribose, ribonucleic acid, yeah. ATP, all yeah. these things that have oxygen in them. Yeah. And yeah, what I'm saying is, you can have oxygen that's around that isn't necessarily just free floating oxygen. So if you have an organism that uses carbon dioxide, for example, they still now have access to oxygen and can use oxygen to do stuff. And it doesn't have to be free floating oxygen that would then oxidize tissues. Right. So how do you get the molecular um, formulas that the, the, atoms to go where they're supposed to do without oxidation occurring. So, so is your oxygen. understanding, so, sorry, sorry, sorry Forrest, uh, let, me, let, me, let me make sure I understand. So uh, you're postulating that no oxygen whatsoever, like not even um, uh, oxygen atoms can be around in order for life to start. Is that, that that's what you're saying is, is a fact? Yeah, I'm saying that uh, oxygen causes oxidation, whether it's in, um, you know, whether it's uh, reduced into CO2, whether it's reduced into ferrous oxides, whether it's reduced into sulfur oxides. Uh, it, it doesn't matter um, what, uh, what form the oxygen is in, how do you get it to where it needs to go? I mean, take... Uh, RNA and, you know, hydrolysis, I can, I for can, example. I, I feel I feel like I could totally dismiss your entire argument because of what you just said, because it, you said that it doesn't matter what form the oxygen is. Anybody that's been it through any kind of matters. chemistry class knows that the form in which your your uh, your chemicals are in, or the form in which anything presents in, is very important. Even even mm -hmm. the, down to like in in what order do you combine elements together or right. combine chemicals together? Sorry, does that matter? So I feel like I could just totally disregard your right. entire argument here because yes. you don't know how chemistry actually operates. Yeah, it's, oh, it's like saying, like, how, we, how can you we, possibly, we, it's like saying, how chemistry. can you possibly say that table salt exists? Because if there's chlorine in there, then you've just halogenated something like, yeah, of course it is halogenated. But that doesn't matter because chlorine isn't going to behave like chlorine when it's bonded with sodium and sodium isn't going to behave like sodium when it's bonded to chlorine. It's the way those atoms are put together that makes the difference and it makes them behave the way that they do. Sodium by itself is explosive. Exactly. Chlorine by itself is corrosive. So when they're together, they're not. And so now you have oxygen. Depending on where you put so oxygen, depending on what molecule it's attached to, 
all you've said so far is that it doesn't matter where oxygen is or what it's attached to, it's going to have detrimental effects to life. And that's just not true. So you're, you're misrepresenting my argument here. Uh, if, so explain if what it we're then. looking at is, uh, is ferrous oxides, which is iron, uh, basically yes. rust, um, ferrous oxides, yeah. ferrous or iron does not exist in uh, ribose or ATP or any of the, the molecules. So it's got to, to pull the oxygen off somewhere to be able to use the oxygen in ribose. In fact, RNA has that extra molecule of oxygen, which is, you know, DNA is deoxyribose. So just for your, uh, uh, yeah, your followers that, you know, deoxyribose doesn't have that extra oxygen. That extra oxygen in, ribo in, in the RNA atom is highly uh, uh, easily oxidized and which, which causes the RNA hydrolysis uh, phenomenon. So what what happens Hydrolysis is you know is even just adding water like that's that's uh, not uh, first, okay RNA hydrolysis is a real thing if you look it up RNA hydrolysis I didn't is say it wasn't an oxidation reaction okay it it's basically it an wasn't oxidation a real thing. reaction which which splits apart an RNA molecule and it yeah you add it's the same way that you break down a protein and the same way that you break down fats. Mo most yeah, things, exactly. most macromolecules are held together by dehydration synthesis. They're formed by dehydration synthesis so, and they're broken down by hydrolysis. That's just adding water. So like, yeah, there's yeah. oxygen involved, oh. but it's the same. Again, what you're missing is that there's oxygen in all sorts of different things that doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to behave the same way. Right. Uh, let me let me ask so, you this, there, Robert. Um, does water do, does water exhibit the, all the exact same properties as, uh, let's say, O O two, like pure oxygen? No, no. So okay, there you go. No, there, there's your answer. Like, I mean, it so, definitely yeah, matters in what form and what configuration it's in. So, but see, that's just it, is that water will actually go in and, and uh, assist in the RNA hydrolysis because it is a hydrolysis reaction. So it's yeah, with that's what it RNA. is. So, <laughs> so what I'm saying is, how do you build up RNA, RNA when it's constantly being torn apart? It's, oh my God, dude. RNA hydro, hydro, okay. RNA breaks down way faster than DNA. Yes, it does. And th th there's a few reasons for that. But that doesn't really matter to the beginning of life because RNA today serves a thousand different purposes in every living cell. It, it, in your body, RNA is doing a million different things. It's not just a, 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 a genetic carrier model, or a, I'm sorry, an, an information carrier. It's not just genetic material. It's also a catalyst. And it also has a thousand other jobs. It makes certain organelles. So like, yes, it is less stable than DNA, that's why DNA evolved because it's more stable in the long term. What does this have to do with no, like you're stating, abiogenesis? You're, you're stating assumptions here. You're stating that DNA just all of a sudden evolved. How do you get DNA if you can't even form RNA because RNA is so unstable that it can't evolve Dude, in the first place? You can form RNA. We've watched it form. What are you talking about? See that is that the Not fundamental from you you haven't haven't watched it form from, from the, the the molecules or I mean from the, the yes, atoms. You, have. you can't even get ribose. Okay, here's ribose doesn't even yes, you you cannot can. even form ribose, dude. We have seen no. so here's some some facts for you. We have found every single uh, um uh what do you call nitrogenous base. All five of them, DNA, or sorry, uh, uh, adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. We have found all five of them on asteroids and shit, in space, and on meteorites that have fallen to the Earth. We These things self-assemble in space. Not the full molecule. And you're, you're going to have to let me finish a sentence someday. You are going to have to let me finish a sentence if you want to have an argument, dude. We have found all of these molecules self-assembled, and there was just a paper published, I think it was either th at the beginning of this year or late last year, that showed uh, oligoribonucleotides, RNA polymerizing by itself under the presence of like really mundane minerals. So yes, we have seen that all of the building blocks of RNA can self-assemble and phosphodiester bonds can form and RNA can polymerize to form oligoribonucleotides by themselves. 
And we know that because RNA is a catalyst as well as genetic material, that it can catalyze its own biochemical reactions. We've seen it self-replicate in the lab. We've found it self-replicating in nature. We found it coding for things that allow it to self-replicate better. It can make its own enzymes and then use those enzymatic reactions to better propagate itself in natural settings. So like, yeah, we've never watched a bunch of random atoms self-form into RNA magically over the course of an afternoon. That's never happened. It's probably never gonna happen because of all the reasons we talked about today. But we have, if there was like five theoretical steps here, we have like two, three, and four. We're just not at the ends yet. And you're sitting here saying, well, you can't find this one itty bitty bit, therefore you don't know anything. And that's not how science works and that's not how thinking works. So you're, you're telling me you've actually found ribose in asteroids. Does it matter compared to everything that yes, we just covered? Matters. You cannot produce, so, you cannot on, form on. ribose. You cannot Rob, form. Uh, Robert, be, Robert, Robert, yeah. Robert, it, can, you, can you please explain to me, like I'm five, um, what, what about oxygen would prevent life from forming? Like just oxygen and atom, that's in a mixture of other atoms or in whatever primordial soup that, that life uh, uh, formed in. Like what about oxygen specifically, the atom prevents life from forming? Also, because I just wanna throw out a, there, uh, I literally just Googled it, just, just to be sure, just to be extra, cause maybe I'm wrong, right? I literally just Googled it. And one of the first things here is an article from NASA about how they found ribose in space. I don't know what to tell you, dude. <laughs> Okay, um, I will look that up. Um, that's, Great, uh, should have done that before the call. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's something that you cannot, that have not been able to do, replicate in the lab, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter. theoretical model. That doesn't matter. If we, fa we don't know how matter. to make, it doesn't. We don't know how to make enantiopure amino acids in a lab either. We don't have an abiotic way to make all left-handed amino acids in laboratory settings. And yet we do find them all left-handed when we find them in space. So there is an abiotic mechanism. We just don't know it yet. So it doesn't no, matter okay, that we okay. can't do it in a lab when we found it in nature in already. Clearly there How is something going on that's causing it. Did somebody go to space what? and find it? Do you know what a probe oh is, God. dude? We got, we've got freaking data on like what's going on in comets in the Kuiper belt. Nobody had to go up there and collect a sample. Also meteorites uh, exist. Yeah, you do. I, I don't necessarily trust anybody that just, oh yeah, we found it. You know, that, that doesn't, that, that's, that's not evidence, dude. That is not evidence. So Google it, <laughs> check to see how they did it. Like I learned this crap in 1000 well, level astronomy class. Like that's yeah, the thing, yeah, and, and even if, I'm sorry, John, John, you go ahead. I, Cause I've got more to say, but I've been talking for a long time. That's fine. I, I was just, I was, I was, I was wondering if Robert can explain to me, like I'm five, what about oxygen? Just uh, like O2 pure oxygen. What about it? What characteristic of it? What does it do that prevents life from forming? Well, not, not O2, it's, it's uh, just plain or pure oxygen. It, uh, it, causes high, uh, it causes oxidation, which can uh, be uh, a very violent reaction when we get with combustion, and it can also be a very slow reaction with rust. So oxidation uh, okay, prevents- That's violent either way. Uh, what? <laughs> I don't what, see, what I don't see how wrong? any of this prevents life. Like, I, I don't see how any of this prevents life from forming. Um, you, you're not, you're just explaining to me like what, what those processes are and not how they negatively affect the ability of life to form. Okay. Uh, all science, uh, all the uh, papers that I've read say that, uh, oxidation prevents life from forming. That's why, uh, Stanley Miller took okay, oxygen okay. out if of you, his, if you, uh, Right. Okay. Okay. So, if that's if that's true, if that's true, then uh, and you've read all of these papers about it, you should be able to explain why oxygen prevents life from forming. Because of oxidation, we, we look at examples like uh, RNA hydrolysis. It is an oxidation reaction. It is the oxygen molecule on the uh, 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 I forget which prime four prime 
it's the oxygen molecule on, on four prime that goes and attaches itself to the uh, um, the uh, phosphorus. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm forgetting the, the actual terms. But when you look at an oxygen, uh, okay. uh, okay. let's, let's just RNA, cover this. It rips. Well, let's just cover this really uh, quick. Let's just cover where we're at really quick, if we can. Robert, Robert, let's just cover where we're at when, uh, currently, at least in my understanding of this conversation. One, you don't know that the form in which uh, compounds, uh, you know, present in or exist in uh, affect the chemical reactions and, and how uh, atoms form bonds and all that. You don't know that. You don't know how oxi oxygen actually prevents yeah, I, life I from do. forming you're, as you claim it. No, no, no. I mean, this, these are just things that we demonstrated I, I in the call. All that. Like, it's, it's the, no, no, okay. I mean, but you so can't. The you, you RNA just tried to explain it, and you didn't. Two, so, two prime oxygen, hydrogen of the ribose acts as a nucleophile. It attaches okay. to the uh, phosphorus and the phyodester bond of the nu of the sugar phosphate backbone of the RNA. This is I'm reading this from the Wikipedia. Okay, I mean I, I've studied this <laughs> stuff just because I don't have it on the top of my head. Uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't mean I don't so know. Well went to the Wikipedia to prove it. That like, yeah. so so let's it, just. Let's just to pretend for a second. Let's just pretend for a second. Let's just pretend for a second, Robert, that we don't have an answer. Like, because we fucking do. But like, just just for a second, let's just assume we have no idea where RNA came from or how it works. We all we know we we we've just woken up and it's the 1700s and we have no idea what RNA even is and we don't know what's going on with life or how anything formed or where anything come from we have zero clue about any of this stuff and as far as we know it's impossible how does that get us to a god basically because atheists believe that there's either uh, well there's only two options there, there's either supernatural creation or there's a natural creation if we take the natural solution the natural origin of man or abiogenesis and if it uh, is uh, disproven, if uh, we can falsify abiogenesis, that leaves creation. It leaves the supernatural. Nope. That's the only thing left. If we take away the no, natural, the only thing left, uh, yeah, because there's only one natural solution. What if it was a we don't have, different we don't thing? Have multiple, we don't have multiple natural solutions. If what you if take it was away the God? natural solution. No, no, look, look Jeff, if, he, right. if he disproves abiogenesis on this call, magic is possible, okay? That's that's what I'm getting at. Is okay. that like if you disprove that that abiogenesis at the model that we have for abiogenesis doesn't work, then either there's maybe there's a god or maybe there's a different model that we don't know about yet that actually works. Or maybe panspermia is a thing and life started elsewhere and was seeded here. Or maybe the life-rich universe uh, uh, model, which is about, this is a kind of a fringe thing, but it's reasonable, that at a certain point in the expansion of the universe after the Big Bang, the entire universe was at the right temperature and the right conditions for life to start. So maybe the seeds of life were developed and self-assembled literally across the entire universe. And then as it continued to expand and cool, now it's not possible for life in most of the universe anymore, but the ingredients and the possibility for life and the seeds of life are completely ever present and just waiting to get kickstarted by a planet in the Goldilocks zone. Maybe that's a thing. Or maybe we live in a simulation and actually what we call God is just the programmer that's living outside of this and he made the push the button. There's still more options. And like, what I'm trying to get to you here is that even if we didn't know jack shit about abiogenesis, which again, I can't stress this enough, most of what you have said here is wrong. And we know a lot of the things that you don't think we know. But even if we didn't know anything about it, that wouldn't be a reason to say, okay, therefore magic. You need positive evidence for a God existing and then you need to prove that that God can create life. Then you need to prove that the God did create life and how they created life there's so many questions that you're not answering. And instead of having the cojones to stand up and say, I don't know if there is a God or not, I don't have any evidence for that. You're saying, you don't know something about that. And therefore all of my magical beliefs are real. X equals zero isn't the same thing as Y equals one, Rob. So you, what you're doing is you're jumping to the end uh, solution here. I don't, I cannot prove to you my God exists. What I am trying to prove to you, you can't is prove that, to me that God any God, God exists. A creator exists. Now, if you want to call that creator 
as a uh, the the author of the matrix here, and we are living in a simulation, then that is your creator, okay? If you want to call pink pixie farts as the creation of the, the entire universe, then that is your creator, okay? So I'm just arguing for prove, a creator. As a you is. can't prove Something that is. any creator exists, is the point. It doesn't matter if you can disprove a biogenesis. If you can... If All you can disprove abiogenesis, you haven't done anything. Does not work. You can, even if you could prove abiogenesis, you would have disproven one natural solution, one naturalistic explanation. There could be another one. So again, even if you could debunk everything we know about science in its entirety, you would not have done the first thing to give evidence for a creator. Just because this doesn't make sense doesn't mean this other thing does. X equals zero is not the same as Y equals one. Sorry, I, I muted him. I, I was tired. And I was more in. interested in what you had to say. Yeah, I've got him back. Yeah, yeah. Pants, 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 spermia. Hey, Robert, can you tell me another natural process in reality that requires uh, a god in order to operate? Am I still on? Yeah, you're still on. You're back. Okay, I heard a beep. I'm sorry. Um, so, can I tell you another process that requires God? Um, actually, right. I can't because once God set up everything, it uh, it's all self uh, self reliant. That's what life That's is. That's called deism. Uh <laughs> So, so basically what I feel like what you're arguing now is that this supernatural entity, magical wizard in space, let's say, uh, s created the universe, set all of the laws in motion, and then just let, let it go. How can you reasonably prove that, that, that God, that type of God exists? If, if God has created this universe to just operate naturally, how can you actually prove that God was needed for the universe to even be here if it all just works naturally? Because it didn't have a natural beginning. It did not have a natural start. It had to have come from a supernatural creation of some kind. I can't prove to you what that creation is. Question. Okay, I can't prove to you I have a what, different question. What, the, the, what the creator is. But uh, yeah. as long as if we know that it's not a natural solution, then it requires a supernatural one. So here's a question for you, Robert. Uh, hypothetically, okay. if I were to prove everything you said wrong in front of you in a way that you would actually give a shit about, if I were to show you in a laboratory, I, I pull out a big old Erlenmeyer flask and I dump some shit in there uh, and I, from, from random ass atoms, I develop all four major macromolecules of life and they self-assemble and they self-elongate and they form together and they make a, a bacteria that crawls out of the thing and evolves into a human in front of your very eyes. It's all, uh, all the most fantastical thing. If I could actually show you that all of these things can self-assemble that way, would you become an atheist? Uh, it, it's not a uh, uh, a um, yes or no question because God can still exist be. even alongside uh, the natural formation of life, a biogenesis. And okay. there it is, so, Rob. So, so, what, thank you, you so much. No, that's it. Thank you so much for being incredibly honest. That's exactly what you were supposed to say. You don't actually give a shit. You don't care whether or not these things can happen naturally. You just found a thing to argue about because even if you just said even if it could happen naturally, that will then God does it that way. God allows those natural things to happen. So you're sitting here saying, there's no way that this can happen naturally, therefore there's a God. But if it does happen naturally, no, no, no. that's God too. You, you, it you doesn't are, matter. You are misrepresenting me again, Forrest. You are misrepresenting me again. What did I say that's wrong? What did I say? What did I say is wrong? The teapot floating around, uh, uh, the, the teapot floating around Jupiter argument. Can you prove to me that, that the teapot doesn't float around Jupiter? It, exactly. <laughs> so you can't say that any natural thing isn't God, therefore it might be. And if you can't explain it naturally, then it's absolutely God. And if you so, can't explain it naturally, so, that's the way God did it. God set it up that way. 
You just did the thing that uh, we were no, joking that's, that's about not, at the beginning of the show, dude. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. No, that, that's not what I'm saying. No, that, but that, I'm, explain what, how Robert, I misrepresented it. That's exactly it. what you said. That, that's exactly what you said. How? Uh, because I, from what you said a second ago, and, and just yes or no, did you not just say that if abiogenesis is how life uh, started, uh, um, either on here on Earth or elsewhere in the universe, then that was still God? Is that not what you said? Or that it could so possibly the, the, be God, is what he just said. Yeah, so okay. what I'm saying is that the, there's still a possibility, even if life were to form naturally, there's still the possibility right. of being God because it doesn't explain serendipity. It doesn't explain uh, things of, of coincidence and uh, the, uh -huh. the so, so uh, how, meeting. Let, let, let me ask you, let me ask you, how, how would you disprove the idea that God is, is the one that created, like, it did abiogenesis or started the process like what would your falsifiability criteria be for this the the falsibility criteria of serendipity no the false oh, god the, the thing he just said what is your way of falsifying the idea that god caused abiogenesis if i could prove abiogenesis to you if i could demonstrate it in front of you how would you go about proving that god wasn't involved Oh, no, if, if you could prove to me that, that life could get started, if you could take molecules to man, the atoms to man, going step by step, not by taking, you know, uh, not by saying, okay, uh, I'm, I'm creating these um, uh, amino acids, and therefore, you know, uh, no, you, you've got to take, you've got to go from the, the atoms to amino acids to RNA to, uh, uh, to DNA, uh, to the formation None of that of is abiogenesis and also amino acids don't make RNA. Just throwing that out there. No, no, you, you, you're correct. The, nu the nucleotides, the, the nucleosides, uh, the ribose, you know, I mean, you can take all Those of this things. and start with the atoms themselves. I will admit uh -huh. that God had no. What? So that's not what you just said a second ago. But like, okay, so you're saying if I could do this, th I'm just going to repeat myself a minute ago. If I could bring out a big old Erlenmeyer flask, dump a bunch of atoms in there and demonstrate from completely naturalistic means that those atoms self-assemble and then make all the macromolecules alive and then become a living thing, would you then become an atheist and say there's no way God's involved in this? I, I would say that, no, see, but that's, that's just it. I would say that you're not proving that God doesn't exist. I would say that there's no way that God's not involved in that. So I could I could so, be honest and concede that God did not help to create life, but that does not prove that God does not exist because of things like serendipity and coincidences. Right. So so this and again, you did a different thing this time, but you still did a, a very similar you know, bullshit argument. You picked up the goalposts and ran somewhere else with them. Is that you, can, you called in to say, you can't show me these things can self-assemble. And I was like, yeah, we can. And I showed you that we can. And we had this whole back and forth about it. But now you admit it doesn't fucking matter if we can, because even if we could, there's some other thing that you think we can't explain. Some other thing that, that, that God must have been involved in. It doesn't matter to you. And I guarantee that if we could find every single bit of explanation about every single thing, if we had a mathematical formula that proved serendipity and coincidence and all the things and, and showed how they all work, if we had a chemical formula for every single thing you could possibly perceive of, then you would just say that's so very intricate. It needs a God to create it, and you can't prove God didn't do it. Like, that's yeah, the thing, all, dude. All you're it doing is appealing to the accident, uh, uh, the accident of the gaps. You're saying accidents did it. You're, you're taking away God and you're no, replacing with not. accidents. Accidents did it. No, that, I'm that's not. That's exactly what you're saying. You're, you're going to a fallacy that, you know, you're replacing the, the God of the gaps fallacy with the accident of the gaps fallacy. No, I'm not. I haven't said anything was an accident. Nothing that I've said in this entire call has been accidents. All of it is like chemical laws and physical laws. These things operate under the laws of chemistry and physics. All of life does. So these are With things that can naturally happen. Against the so, so laws of Robert, chemistry Robert, and physics. All of, Robert, did you just you say perceive... all of life is against the laws of chemistry and physics? Yeah, because it's not energetically fable, favorable. Are so you which, pulling which, second which law of thermodynamics right now? 
Potential energy, yes. Potential energy. So, so what has more potential, potential energy, yeah. ADP or AT ATP? So, just really quick, just really quick. The second law of thermodynamics, what's the entire text of that law real quick? The, uh, uh, the total minimum potential energy principle is a, a corollary or a uh, postulate uh, created out of the laws of thermodynamics. I'm not talking about entropy here. This has second, nothing to do with entropy. This has to do with specifically with potential energy and energetically favorable uh, chemical reactions. So what is more energetically favorable, ATP or ADP? That's not a, what do you mean by energetically favorable? You mean by which one has, has, has potential energy? Yeah, which one has more potential energy and which way is it gonna go? Are you, are you going to create AT ATP from ADP in a, a natural environment? Yes, literally yes. It's called N ATP synthase. It's, there's a, an enzyme that does that, yes. Oh, you mean there's a, there's a molecule that will add onto it and, and manufacture ATP? Not in a prebiotic yeah. environment where, where you don't have those enzymes. Do you, do you understand you how don't... big the ATP synthase enzyme is? I'm just going to do, just gonna you know do how... a thing for you really quick. Do you know how massive the ATP synthase uh, protein is? It's a big why, yes. Why, I does, why does this matter? Why why does this matter? Like what? I'm I'm sorry. I, I you know I'm a I'm a software and computer engineer and not not like a, a chemical engineer or or an evolutionary biologist. So why, so, why I mean, does this matter? Because uh, the the ATP synthase is a structure that basically takes ADP and combines it to it adds energy to create ATP. So it takes ATP or it takes ADP and adds another uh, phosphate molecule on the end of it, and it has to manufacture Sorry. it. It's a factory. It's a massive yep. uh, uh, protein. You you don't just get well, I mean, you, ATP you, synthase. You say you say manufacture, but I mean these these are just things that form in nature. You're trying to make it no, sound they, far they more designed than it actually is. They, they are formed by life. They do not form in a okay. prebiotic environment. You would need evidence to say that it, it, you know, that. Yeah, I mean, you're just saying that. You're not actually proving it. Also, nothing that you've said so far actually uh, has any kind of meaning as to whether or not any of these things can form naturally. Like, you're just like, it's a big honking motherfucker right there, and you know, therefore it can't form life, or, you know, it's not going to form life in a natural environment. And, I mean, okay. all of this is just let, ad hoc let speculation. You. Let, let me teach you about ATP synthase for just real quick. You basically, it's formed of uh, ATP synthase, A, B, C, and, and then it has uh, alpha, beta, uh, gamma, epsilon, uh, all these different par parts are put together to form ATP synthase. All these different subproteins are created to form the, the massive protein called ATP synthase. Now, if you were to take just okay. ATP synthase A, a single, uh, okay. uh, peptide bond of around 300 amino acids, it would take you and uh, it has the same, um, same probabilities of trying to win the, the Powerball uh, lottery every week for a year. If you played the Powerball lottery every week for a year, oh, so you'd have to win thing. every and, single time. And did you? To get and did you know that if you, if you if put a tornado through a junkyard and it made a jet engine, that's that's like life to, to think. It's the same thing. Uh, I just I just Googled some stuff just for funsies, and I found like some a couple of papers immediately about how you can generate ATP without ATP synthase and without a mitochondrion. And I found like some stuff about like early life and how they use proton yeah, gradients you, like ATP synthase to. Um, you cannot so take, just, you just, cannot produce ATP in a, in a they have not even begun to produce you're, ATP you're gonna, in a prebiotic environment you, you because ATP breaks down ADP. 
You're, you're just saying it and you're not actually proving it. Like you can't, you can't explain in simple terms why that's impossible. You can't explain in simple terms why oxygen prevents life. And uh, you can't explain in Let simple terms it. what would Let me explain your in idea simple terms about God creating everything. What ATP is. ATP is the chemical reaction that basically creates all of the other reactions. It, it basically, it takes no, it's ATP. Not. It's not a reaction, it's a molecule. <laughs> it's, it's a molecule that, that when it breaks apart, it releases enough energy to combine uh, other molecules together. It is the, the energy, it is the battery of life. It basically, you cannot form any other molecules without ATP. Because when, when ATP breaks down to ADP, it releases the energy necessary to combine and form the other molecules. So without ATP, you're not going to get any other molecules. Without Without, with, and I you're just, not going to form. I just double checked something that I learned. I just double checked something that I learned in like undergraduate cell bio that I wasn't sure about. I wanted to double check, but I just, yeah, just double checked to make sure I got the words right. Substrate level phosphorylation is the direct formation of ATP or GTP by transferring phosphate groups from high energy compounds onto an ADP or GDP molecule. You don't need ATP synthase for it. You don't need a mitochondrion for it. It just happens, again, and, by following basic chemical laws. That. No, they have not done that. No. Okay, okay, I guess they're wrong. They, just, <laughs> they can't do that. It's, that's just the thing that this paper got wrong. Never mind. <laughs> it's fucking shit, dude. Like, yes, so again, you can make these molecules without it. There are other forms of chemical energy besides it. You can break down ATP all the way down to AMP, and you can still have energy there. It's just, you're just breaking off phosphates. So like you have a high energy molecule yeah. that you can make by combining low energy molecules. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. And yeah, there are really complicated ways like ADP synthase, but all of those are naturalistic. And yeah, okay, you can't make it in an abiotic environment. There are other forms of chemical energy, bro. So like what you're doing is the standard creationist thing where you're just looking at modern life and saying, if it isn't this from scratch, then it can't be anything. And that's not how abiogenesis or evolution works. Also, I feel like I need to explain this. Abiogenesis and evolution are different things. You've conflated them like three different times in this call. They're different things and they do different things. So like... I don't know, man. It sounds to me like you listen to like William Lane Craig or Dr. Tour or something like that, or some of these other people that like grossly misrepresent science in order to make a bad creationist argument. And then you called in here like, here's some words I learned on Wikipedia. That means that God's real. And not only have you not demonstrated any scientific like uh, uh, reality here, but again, as I said earlier, even if I agreed with the stuff you were saying, none of it would be a good argument for God because X equals zero isn't the same as Y equals one. No, I, and I understand that. That's why uh, I, I'm not trying to prove my God. I am trying to prove a creator, a supernatural. It doesn't existence. matter and what you're talking about. You can't the, prove a the, creator the by know... not, you cannot prove a creator by trying to disprove it naturalism. That's not how that works. Even if you disprove you everything have. we know about the natural world, it would not prove a creator. You need positive evidence for the claim you're making, not negative evidence against a different claim. That's not how science works. So it, uh, just real quick on ATP, um, it has a half-life of like two seconds. So you're not yeah. gonna get any buildup of ATP, okay? Um, and no, I Duh. didn't just learn this from James Four. And uh, uh, you know, I, this, I, I'm actually um, I've read hundreds of papers, literally hundreds of papers on abiogenesis. I've hundreds. Read, um, and hundreds. you didn't know yeah. that we found ribose and meteorites. Hundreds of papers, and yet you don't know how you know we, that we found all these things and why they matter. Yeah, I, I'm not. I am not accepting that we found ribose in meteorites. That's. That, I'm not accepting that because we can't even begin to create it here. And you know, in I'm just going to throw it in the you know, chat. When, when, you're about, <laughs> when when you're talking about uh, what form of ribose, you know, there's there's eight different forms of ribose, and only one is correct. So you're talking the, about uh, isomers right now, like that, like. 
Yeah. Oh my God. You're talking about isomers right now when you started this call by saying that it doesn't matter what form oxygen comes in, it's still oxygen. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, that makes no sense. Yeah, I, I'm talking about ribose isomers when you have eight different isomers that you can create, but you can't even create them. You can't even create the, the isomers. That's my point. You cannot get it in a lab. They're so far away. I'm, I'm posting. Yeah, yeah, no, they're they're so far away. We have no idea what's on the other side of the solar system. It's so far away. We have no way of knowing what's out there. Spectrometry isn't a thing, <laughs> and probes aren't a thing. Of course. I just put it in the chat, and I'll read it here. Uh, this is from this article. First detection of sugars in meteorites gives clues to the origin of life. It's from 2019. The team discovered ribose and other bioessential sugars, including, uh, uh, the, I'm just too far away from me in two small texts, uh, these other two sugars, um, zy zy zylo, I can barely read it, dude, uh, in two different meteorites that are rich in carbon, and they give the name of the two meteorites, ribose, crucial component of RNA, which in, in much modern life, RNA serves as a messenger molecule, blah, 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 and they go on to explain how it works again back in 2019 we found sugars including ribose in meteorites and i just published the article from nasa.gov but of course you can't trust nasa because they're trying to hide you know the the ice wall around the flat earth right yeah so uh um first evidence of ribose that's that's not saying that they have found ribose it found, yeah, it no, said, mean. the team discovered ribose and other bioessential sugars in two different meteorites. That's the sentence. Okay, well, I'll, I'll concede the point then. They can't do Fuck, it in a lab. Fuck, I guess God's not real. Damn. Oh, no, they can't do it in a lab. That means God is real. Shit, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> These things self-assemble in space, but we didn't do it in a lab, and that means that we can't disprove creationism. Well, you, you make a, a, a claim for panspermia here. It, it just, could, just couldn't happen I, I on can't Earth. get over this, dude. You keep, you keep doing the same thing over and over and then claiming you're not doing it. You can't prove this. This doesn't self-assemble. Yes, it does. Okay, well, you didn't do it in this other way then doesn't matter it self-assembles and then we talked about like if i could prove it to you well, would you believe it yeah but there could still be a god every time you present an argument we explain how the argument doesn't make any sense and then you run like hell with the goalposts to the next argument it does this whole call has been they can't make ribose in a lab who cares we found it in space does it matter if they can't make it in a lab if we could make it in a lab would you then accept abiogenesis if you did accept abiogenesis would you then stop believing in a god just just be honest and just say you want to believe in a God because you want to believe in it because you want to believe in it. Like, honestly, at, at this point, it's just frustrating. Yeah, um, I, I, uh, I understand what you're saying, and uh, I would believe in a God because of uh, the experiences that I've had in my life. They are, you know, like and I there say, it is. There's another one. And you can't explain it. So is yeah, that what we're well, talking about? Why the hell did we spend 30? Valid. Why did we spend 43 minutes talking about fucking simple sugars and ATP when at the end of the day, it didn't matter? Why did you call in and talk to us for 40 minutes oh, did, did about abiogenesis you when you didn't no, care? Dude, no, I, when you didn't I care at all. In, because these are, these are some, some questions that I had as, as to how atheists can answer. You're, you're not going to convert me. I mean, I, I, uh, I know God exists, but I'm not going to be able to prove him to you, okay? I know personally, but I'm not going to be able to prove him to you or to anybody else. You have to experience him yourself. I mean, he's got to... And so to, we're right back it, here. We're right back yeah, here to this well, very basic call of, you can't prove me wrong. If you can't be proved wrong, you don't have a good belief. A good belief is one that can be falsified. One that you could say, if this is true, then my belief isn't true. For you to just say, That's not I can't belief. be wrong Where about it. Where are you it. getting that from? That, that is not That's a, what a good That's the basics of is. logic. No. Falsifiability is, is one of the most important logic. things in science. There are actual Falsifiability is one of the most wrong. important things. There are axioms in logic that you cannot prove wrong. Tell you what, you had a personal experience with God. You had a personal experience yeah. with God. That's what you said a second ago. And that's how you know that God is real. Uh, how have you yeah. discounted the possibility that you were either drugged 
hallucinating, had a schizophrenic break, or were dreaming? How'd you discount all of those? How do you know those aren't happening? Uh, alertness, the, the uh, amount of time, uh, because I don't ever do drugs, uh, the consistency, it's not a one-time thing. It is, what? Did you, Somebody could drug you. Just you. Say it's not one time. <laughs> yeah, I was alert. I've done... I've done LSD a couple of times. I was quite alert for the entire experience. Okay, I'm just saying that it wasn't drug induced because I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs. Some so somebody might have drugged there, you. There somebody slipped something in your drink. Uh, yeah, that doesn't happen when I'm at home. Yeah, no, there could <laughs> have been a secret spy. Like there could have been a spy in your house oh, who yeah, slipped something spy. into your okay, drink. Okay, yeah. It, it, all these accidents Robert, did it. Yeah, I understand the accidents Robert, did it policy. Okay. Robert, do you understand? Do you understand that the most outlandish, insane, over the top, ridiculous story that I could possibly give you is more likely than magic? If I tell you that there was a secret agent who drugged you so that the government could use you to call the show at this time to distract somebody so that they didn't see them taking something from their bank account because the Bohemian Grove is performing a magic ritual to try to bring so some crazy international billion dollar conspiracy theory that involves you having what you think is a religious experience. That is more likely than magic which we have no evidence for ever. So again, have you ever heard of how, have you how have you discounted, how have you discounted every pos- Yes, have and you Occam's ever heard Razor, of Occam's by- Razor? Yes, and Occam's Razor, by <laughs> definition, would immediately discount fucking magic. Uh, when no, you hear hoofbeats, think idea. horses it, before uh, you think it, wizards. Immediately, I am going to believe there is a God before you're, you're tinfoil hat conspiracy theory, dude. Yes, are you, kidding you are me? going to believe. <laughs> yes, you are going to believe that there is a magic man in the sky who cares whether or not you masturbate before you'll believe that governments do shady things sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, dude, is you yeah. have decided it, that this it, is reasonable when it of, isn't. The amount of logic that you have to do to try to, to uh, disprove God I mean, Occam's razor immediately yeah. says, you know, okay, there, there are no, no these, pause, these, pause, these, pause. These, your tinfoil hat Robert, conspiracy Robert, theories are bunk. Robert, 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 can you please explain what Occam's razor is? I just, I want to, because everything in this call has led me to the conclusion that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about at every single point in this conversation. So please exp- define Occam's razor for me. Occam's razor basically says the most simplest explanation usually is the truth. Nope. L- okay. F. That, that's Been basically F. Occam's no, razor. That's not. No, no, no. That's not Occam's razor, especially not in the current context that we're speaking in. Oh, come on. It, it's, it's close enough. You, you know what I'm saying. No, it's You're, not. The, the, it's not no, close no, enough no, for the conversation the we're having. Is generally what is the it, truth. No, no, no. So You're missing uh, Occam's words. Razor states that the the hypothesis with the least amount of ad hoc, uh, 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 like things that you're adding on to it without that are not yeah assumptions thank you Forrest uh, assumptions that you're adding on to it um, the one that has the most is the least likely to be true and so the one with the least amount of assumptions is the one that's more likely to be correct. So what yes. you Which said is, is actually it's- not applicable to our conversation. Yeah, so it's not the you're, simplest. You're it's the one with the least amount of assumptions. You are assuming right. that there is supernatural world out there. You're assuming that there's a guy who lives in that supernatural world. You're assuming that that guy has superpowers and can create ribos and all sorts of other things. And you're assuming that he did that. You're assuming a lot of things. Whereas all I'm assuming is the world works the way that I can see the world working. No, but you just said the world work. You just assumed that there was this government conspiracy that, that distracted me. I didn't to put somebody in my. Something I in my didn't print. assume that, kidding? Robert. That is far more. I didn't assume yeah, that. You, you I did. said. 
I said that the most extreme, ridiculous, over-the-top conspiracy theory is more likely than a god because I don't have to make any assumptions with that. I know the government's real. I know drugs are real. I know spies are real. I know international conspiracies are real. I know shady shit happening for stupid reasons are real. I know things like MK Ultra are real. I know lots of things that involve that story that are real. So I don't have to make any assumptions. I can say all these things actually exist and maybe they did that. And as stupid as that would be to believe, it would be worlds more likely, likely than a god did it. And I have to assume there's a magical realm with magical creatures in it and a magic man in the sky flying around like a wizard who created life because he just wanted to because he's a cool space wizard like that. Those are more assumptions than some crazy fucking thing. Or you you had a, a carbon monoxide leak in your house and you hallucinated. You had a psychotic break. You went crazy for a brief second because that happens sometimes to some people. Any other thing, you were dreaming and you didn't know it. You thought you were awake when you weren't. You've convinced yourself it was real when it wasn't. You've decided that you want to believe something. You had a traumatic event in your past that you're trying to cover up with this God belief. Any of the more reasonable things that we know happen to some people any ridiculous, crazy, unlikely thing, if we know is possible, is more likely than a god, which we have no evidence for whatsoever. So, so how is that more likely than a god? Because I, for, for the reasons I just said a second ago, because we have no evidence no, no, for it's, any it's supernatural thing. Assumptions. We have... We you're have making, no evidence for anything supernatural at all. Oh, there it is. Zero. We don't have any evidence. See, you don't have any evidence. Right. I do. That, that's the whole point. What, what's your evidence? I can't give you what's more evidence? evidence. Because it's and anecdotal. It's, evidence. Evidence. it's not evidence. It's anecdotal. If you it's, can't it's give anecdotal. me the evidence, then it's not fucking evidence, Robert. Like, that's not what Robert, evidence is. It, it's evidence hey, to me. You, if I tell you that there is a magical do, goblin living in, if I tell you there's a magic goblin living in my closet that grants wishes and eats Subway sandwiches, and I have a personal experience and I can't prove it to you, but it's my evidence for me, would you think it's a credible claim? Uh, I would not think it was a credible claim. That's why I said I can't give you why? my evidence. You're not going to accept so why? my anecdotal evidence, but it's still evidence to me. Now, if you believed okay, that there was okay, something okay. actually so, Robert, there. Let's, let, let's stop and have, uh, the, so you have your anecdotal evidence that proves you're God, right? Yeah. Muslims all over the world also have anecdotal evidence that prove to them that, you know, Allah, uh, well, you know, the uh, Abrahamic version of God for Islam is real. So, I'm just kind of curious, how does your evidence differentiate from theirs in that yours is the true one? Okay, now you're changing the, the argument here because I'm talking specifically no, I'm about a creator. Either. When you know, you're, you're no. asking what kind of creator. And that's how where you get into no, the no, philosophical evidence. I'm not asking what kind of creator. No, listen, listen to the words that are, that are coming out of my lips, okay? Listen to the words that, are, that I'm saying here. What I'm saying is, is I want you to differentiate your anecdotal evidence from the anecdotal evidence that people of other faiths have that prove to them their God is real. Can you differentiate between those two things? No, because it's the same evidence. That's my point, is that they are, they are well, getting evidence from the creator. Point. Yes, thank you for demonstrating why anecdotal evidence doesn't mean shit to anybody. Why aren't you, when you called in to talk about science at the beginning, for whatever fucking reason you did, when you called in to say, I've read all these papers and they all said these things, would you have believed any of those papers or taken them any kind of seriously if they had that kind of evidence? If the papers had said, I've never seen ribose happen, so fuck it, I guess it doesn't. Or like, I have a personal experience with ribose. Would you believe me if I had said, I have a personal experience that I saw some ribose self-forming. I can't prove it to you though. I haven't published it. I haven't shown you anything. Why wouldn't you believe anecdotal evidence for anything else? Because when you're talking about uh, creation of ribose, you can be able to, the, the scientific uh, method says that you should be able to duplicate that evidence. So my evidence right. is duplicated. Why is in that important? People like Muslims. You, you just Why duplicated is it important? my evidence in Muslims. Your evidence that, for a why is God. That I'm asking, why is it important to go by the scientific method here? Why? 
because you can duplicate it. You, if, if you want to duplicate God, then you can humble your heart, you can get down on your knees, and you can pray for three days. And until he Dude, reveals himself you are to you, and he will do that. that ever, I swear, in, I, in, you are doing every days, single creationist trope. Every single creationist trope we've ever heard on this show, you were doing all of them. I swear to glob, if you say, look at the trees, I'm going to lose it. You know we have several hosts on this channel that were former believers, that were devout in their belief, that believed in the same kind of things you believe, if not more so, and that did pray for days and all these things, and still came to the conclusion that oh, there no, is no, no such thing as a God. I don't know anybody that sat on their knees for three days waiting for an answer. You, they, they can claim, oh, yeah, I prayed, you know. I don't know anybody come, that's come done no. it. Therefore, you, nobody has. Did you oh, do show, it? Show did you pray for three days? Person, I didn't. It didn't did you wait for three, three days? days? So then how do you know that works? You don't know anybody who does it, and yet you're here saying this is the magic number. At midnight on because the third day, me. God will come out, schlong in hand, and teach you about his existence. I can't, uh, dude. This, this I'm is so all about fucking bored of this, dude. You don't it's want insane. to do it. You don't this, want to find out whole, if there's God. Yes, I don't want to believe. Dude, this is so fucking boring. At this point, it, it's really, it, it's like you've got a fucking bullet point list that you're going down saying like, you can't prove this. Yes, we can. Well, you can't prove this other thing. Yes, we can. Well, you can't do it this way. Yes, we can. Well, you haven't believed the, only, the right way. Lots of people have. Well, you didn't do it this you way. You haven't either. Like, is that Rybos was formed in space. Okay? That's all you've proven. You yeah, haven't proven this assembly. You haven't proven... From from the atoms, I did to man. talk about that actually a few none, times. None of, none of these things but, matter. And also, none you none demonstrated you. you, you yeah, you I'm sorry, John. I don't mean to keep cutting you off, dude. You, you have also as, said you don't care about that several times. Why do you default to it? You said at the, in the middle of this call that the only reason you brought that up is because you wanted to see what atheists had to say about it. But at the end of the day, you're just going to believe in God anyway. So why does it fucking matter? It doesn't. You you believe in God because you want to, because you think you have an experience that validates it, when that isn't good enough evidence for anything else ever, even to you. And then you're going to say, well, you haven't prayed for three days, when you also haven't. And we said we have lots of people who believe in here. Well, they haven't done the three-day prayer thing. Where'd you even get that from if you haven't even done it? Why is that the magic thing that you're bringing up? And now you're saying, well, you don't want to believe. I want to know true things. If God is real, I do want to know. If you could prove to me that God is real, any creator is real, I would absolutely be the first person to sit here and say, yes, that is proof, this is real. I would still think he's an asshole. I would still be an anti-theist. The gods on offer are all monsters, but I would be more than happy to say that it's real if you could demonstrate that it is real. I care about whether or not okay. what I believe in is true. Do then, you? Then follow the scientific method and say, okay, I've got a hypothesis. God, you're real. Get down on your knees. Pray for three days. I can guarantee you that he will reveal himself to you in a way that will be uh, unmistakable, that you does, will have does, evidence. Does and God how, reveal does, himself? Does, does, like, how can you guarantee code? that? Ah. How can you guarantee because that? Because it's the scientific method. And the scientific no, method it's method not. The scientific That's method. not what the scientific method the scientific is. Method is I, I can guarantee you, you cannot describe the scientific method to me. Everything in this call has shown <laughs> that you cannot simply describe anything with any kind of accuracy. You just throw shit out there at the wall and hope that we latch on to it. So, I mean... Go ahead. If you can explain what the scientific method actually is and how it relates to the bullshit that you're saying, I will be fucking amazed. <laughs> I, I just said you start with a hypothesis. You start with a hypothesis. You and then hypothesis. what? There's a few other steps. You're, so you're on step two. You're starting on <laughs> yeah. step two. You, you, now where do we you go? Observe, you observe your findings and, you, and then you repeat. So you went from step two to step six and then step seven. Great. That's the scientific method. It's three steps and they're the steps in the middle. Great. Forrest, Forrest, I'm a, I'm a, I, I'm a learned, fucking psychic right now. Okay? When I was looking at the, the scientific method. I don't know what you're talking about. There's four steps in the scientific method when I learned it. So that, that dates me. I understand. Did, yeah. Did, did you ever get, did you ever actually study science in an, in an actual academic setting? Yeah. 
Okay, and you learned Bullshit. four steps? <laughs> yeah, I learned four steps. And step one is hypothesis. You from where would you draw a hypothesis? Out. From where would you draw a hypothesis without an observation, dude? I'm going to I'm going to make an educated guess about nothing. What? Dude, the fact and it doesn't fuck goddamn it's 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 insane how many things you talked about that genuinely don't fucking matter in in any way. Even if you had the right thing here. The scientific method isn't I'm going to assume there's a god and pray for 3 days. That's not how experimentation works. That's the, where's the control group in that? Like <laughs> where what is that? It just, just none of that makes any fucking sense at all. And you keep saying you have to pray for three days. And when you have also said that you have never heard of anybody who has ever prayed for three days, including yourself, and yet you keep telling us that you guarantee that out the three days of praying that God will reveal himself, what are you talking about? How can you guarantee that if you've never seen it? That goes against the scientific method. That, that how you've never because tested that. You have no way of days. saying that. It doesn't take three days. That's my point. If you will, if you, you will, just picked uh, a number. You just picked a days. number. I'm kind of have it done in an hour. Kind of, Robert, Some people have had Robert, it within an Robert, hour and already left. So, so how do you know? So, Robert, because it's repeatable. How do you know I have never prayed? How do you know I've never prayed? How do you know I've never sincerely looked for God? I, I, I imagine you have. Have you done it for three days? Do, you just said three days doesn't matter and it doesn't take three days. How do you know I haven't sincerely looked for God for the exact amount of time that it would take for him to reveal himself? Because it, we have, I said you have to we have for people on this for, channel. For, other, for some people, it's not going to happen in an hour. For some people, it will. For some people, it will we take the people, full three days, and at midnight, we will We it, have people on this show. We have people on this channel who were in training to become ministers that were hardcore oh, believers yeah, well, for decades that believed and worshipped every single day wrong. of their lives. So, Which and, that, and that's it. Now we're back to, and it's no true Scotsman now is they weren't real Christian. They didn't really believe. They didn't believe the right thing the right way. They didn't believe the way Robert did. Robert's got the secret keys to the kingdom that nobody else had. And it's three days, but actually it isn't, but sometimes it is. Like, do you fucking hear yourself, dude? This is the most, it's insane. We've been on the call for an hour now because this has gone from like yeah, weird we to aggravating to funny to boring. And now it's back to aggravating. Cause like, this is like just the most arrogant <laughs> shit. For an hour now, you know more than all these scientists, then you know more than us about how the different things, and now you know more than every other religious person that's ever left religion. Like, how in the hell can you sit here with this much arrogance and audacity and say, no, really, for sure, actually, this is the way to find God. And if you were a believer at one point and you left the religion, you just didn't do it right. That's right. They didn't do it right. Because everybody I, who does it I, right, even Muslims, even Muslims find him. How does that happen? Even fucking Muslims, y'all. <laughs> Robert, you're um, the one that brought I, Muslims up, dude. You guys are the ones that brought no, Muslims up. I brought up the fucking Muslims, y'all. Yeah, uh, other <laughs> religions exist. Shocking revelation for Robert. Uh, John, do you have anything else you want to say? I am so fucking bored right now. This is really obnoxious. <laughs> No, All right. I mean, well, I'm, it, I'm it, pretty it's well. Been, it's been hilarious well and fun. And uh, I'm going to mute you for a second because nobody was talking to you. John, do you have anything that you wanted to say? Uh, no, I mean, I don't see how Robert's really differentiating anything and providing us with any like clear evidence for his God. That's not like, oh, well, personally, I feel like he's real. So, I mean, I just, yeah, I, I, I kind of I've checked out of a, having a serious conversation with Robert, like about, uh, yeah, fifty nine minutes ago, <laughs> we we I've been talking for a long time on this call because it was mainly like sciencey shit and abio shit and like I I was kind of going for a minute. Is there any any avenues that you wanted to to visit that we didn't get a chance to? That you want to revisit and go back to? Oh no, not at all. I mean, I feel like I I've got a pretty good handle on Robert, like as far as what his evidence is, what his arguments are. So I don't really have any interest in in in, in any other avenues really. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bring Robert back on for a second, uh, just to say, Robert, um, you 
really need to like look up the things that you're talking about before you talk about them. And if you're actually interested in discussing a God, you need to have more evidence than I felt the thing once or I had a personal experience. Because again, that wouldn't work for anything else. If you have a good reason to believe in something, you should be able to articulate it. And like you said, with the scientific method, have it be a replicable thing that we can all learn. Uh, otherwise, I don't think your God is real. And quite frankly, even if he is, he's a dick. So I'll give you the last word. Do you have anything you wanted to say that you missed out on? No, I just want to say thanks for having me on. It's been entertaining. It's been a lot of fun. I appreciate you talking to me. And, uh, you know, I'd say God bless you, but uh, I don't know if you, how you'd take that. So, um, you know, I don't, good yeah, luck. I don't want your God's blessing because your God is a monster and I don't want anything from him. All right. Take care. Thanks. Bye bye. Hundreds of papers he's read. Hundreds of papers. Wow. Didn't know Ribo That was an interesting in conversation. <laughs> yep. Hundreds well, of I papers. Mean, come on, Forrest. He couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't uh, define like one particular like concept. Like he couldn't explain them like one bit. So it, it doesn't really surprise also, me. Also, the scientific method, yeah, the scientific method starts with hypothesis, y'all. Um, j just so we're all on the same page observation, then hypothesis then experimentation, then reporting. Then you go on from there and then they get, go, he's gonna say, oh, those were only four steps. You can you can break it down further. It's not important. But like it's, you, there's discussion, there's debate, there's replication, then there's like publishing conclusion. Just, just not, it doesn't start with goddamn hypothesis. Anyway, um, the, yeah, it's, 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 what's frustrating with that is it's, it's really hard to tell whether somebody like that is a troll or a liar. And like, it, it sounds mm -hmm. to me like, like Robert really just didn't give a shit about what was true. He just didn't care. He well, was just interested in talking about something that he thought we didn't have an answer for, but it didn't matter whether or not we did. Mm -hmm. And then he brought about some other thing and it didn't matter that we had an answer for that. And then he brought up his personal experience and it didn't matter that we had an answer for that because at the end of the day, his actual entire argument is God is real. And if you don't believe me, you're wrong. That's all he's got. Yep. Ugh. Um, we've got a few other calls on the line, um, and they're all atheists. And so I'm going to just go ahead and throw out there. Oh, we've got a theist in the screen room right now. Okay, cool. Um, but, uh, mm -hmm. we, we will take a the, we'll take an atheist caller. Um, but, uh, I encourage theists to call in. As you can see, we've got some time tonight. We're happy to talk to you. I think our hard cutoff is, uh, in, in about an hour or so. Um, so we've mm -hmm. got a little bit of time. We're not going to take as long as we did on Robert's call. Robert's call um, was genuinely funny. And so like, we had to keep going with it for a minute. Uh, <laughs> but we've got, we'll take one of these atheists that have been waiting for a long time. Uh, do you have the call screen open, John? Yeah. Do you have one that you prefer? Uh, I don't know. The, the number five kind of looks interesting. Um, number the five. odds of the designer. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about it then. Sheldon, pronouns he, him, calling him from Plymouth Mom's Apples. Uh, says the odds of a designer are 50-50, but he himself is an atheist. Sheldon, you are on the line. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? I'm all right. Thanks for waiting so long to talk to us. Um, yeah, so so what do you mean by 50-50? What, what are you talking about? Well, um would you agree that okay so first of all i'm an agnostic atheist so um uh, i i think that all god concepts are are almost certainly false and and so the reason i believe that is is because of the following i think that the pos there is a possibility that there is a foundational designer w would you agree that it, it's possible that you know it can't be I falsified mean, I... it can't be proven yeah, I guess Shannon, okay. I know, says no. Oh, really? Well, I mean, in, in in the realm, I mean, I guess as far as possible goes, like, you know, you can say nearly anything's possible, but that doesn't mean that it's, like, probable as far as, you know, right. our reality goes. Sure. So I would say and, that it's not probable, but it could be possible. Right. So the way that I look at it is there either is or is not a foundational designer. So for that reason, I would, based on the principle of indifference, 
I would ascribe 50-50 odds. And, and so I, I'd be curious to hear your feedback on that because I, I've never actually talked to anybody about this. This is just something that I kind of, you know, I mean, this is nothing super profound, but it's something that I came up with and that, and that my, 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 uh, I, I feel that the only, um, the only intellectually honest position is uh, agnosticism. So um, from that standpoint, I, am willing to concede that it is possible that there's a foundational designer. And since we have no evidence or, or, uh, and no way to falsify it, I would ascribe 50-50 odds based on the principle of indifference. Uh, okay. I mean, honestly, as far as, as far as odds go, uh, I feel like you would, you would need to, support it a little bit better for t for it being like 50 50 because like i would think a pure dichotomy in this situation would be like you know either god exists or he doesn't like that's a pure dichotomy and we're not attaching anything onto it like a creator description right once you start adding things onto it like oh he's the creator of the universe or he designed the universe or something like that then you're starting to add the what we talked about with occam's razor these assumptions that degrade your hypothesis so i think that starting with 50 50 is giving way too much uh credit to the designer idea just because of how much background information we have on like how things operate in our reality um i tend to look at this as you know well we have um you know so many different things in our past that we once thought god was required for them to happen like lightning rain multiple of the things that you could pick out every single time that we've gained more information about our reality we've proven that those are natural uh processes that just happen and we don't need some supernatural magical aspect to it and we don't need any kind of supernatural um you know explanation for it and so with that in mind, I think it's going to degrade the whole designer thing just because you have a lot of assumptions on the designer por portion of that. Whereas like God not exist exists. And so therefore it's just, you know, that's just how nature operates and that we have loads of evidence for that. So, I mean, I just, I think that the dichotomy here is just, uh, you, I know that you've got it 50, 50, but I think that the designer aspect is like, it should be way less than 50%. Yeah, so a couple of people have actually, like, that just just because there are two options doesn't necessarily mean that the default is 50-50. And so like it, the a couple of people I've seen in the chat have pointed out like, either I will win the lottery tomorrow or I won't. That doesn't mean that there's a 50-50 chance of me winning the lottery. So like, either there's a God or there isn't. Yeah, it sounds like it's just one or the other for sure. But at the end of the day, like, when we're actually talking about probability and existence, it's not like a God existing is just a thing that happens sometimes. So there's a chance that it could or not. I don't think that's how probability really works. Um, but again, I'm not a statistician, you know, I'm just here to, 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 to have fun and talk about science. Um, I don't know. It, it just doesn't sound reasonable to ascribe that high of a probability to such a thing. I think the, um, the, the, uh, com the analogy to the lottery, I think, is specious because we know what the odds are there. The, the, the odds of any of us winning the lottery, we know, are extremely remote. But with respect to a, 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 creation, a, a creator, we, we, don't, we, we have no um, evidence uh, or no way to, um, to falsify its existence. All, all we have is speculation. You can, you know, you can look old, oh, pretty flowers. Therefore, you know, it might be there might be a creator. Well, there might be, and and I'm willing to concede that there is, even though I'm an agnostic atheist. But I am willing to concede that, yeah. I mean, it's I, I don't begrudge anyone to look out on a beautiful sunset and say, oh, come on, it's got to be a design. Well, okay, mm -hmm. maybe it is, but but we don't have I mean, any evidence. So, so if I, if I can, if I can interrupt, like looking at things like that, that I perceive as beautiful, I think of like the scientific 
uh, or not scientific, but the natural processes that go into like producing a colorful sunset, how the light's rays are casted off of the atmosphere and dispersed in a way to where that particular uh, spectrum of light is more prominent. And so, and then the way that my eyes, you know, operate, they, they take it in, in a certain kind of way. Like I think of all of that and I think that that's like awesome, but I don't think, Oh, magic is needed for this. I, 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 mm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm very, um, uh, pessimistic about like, uh, different arguments like that, but I'm just very, I'm not, I'm not impressed by those things. Like I'm, uh, I, I don't, I, I guess I don't necessarily fault somebody for being like, Oh wow, beautiful sunset. But it, it's more about when they're like, Oh, well you think that just nature produces beautiful sunsets. I'm like, yeah. And so like, that's, I mean, I don't know, for me, that's the conversation that matters. Like I really don't care whether or not somebody believes a magical old ass wizard in the sky, help them find their keys one day. Like I, you know, if that makes you feel better, fine. I don't give a fuck. But once you start criticizing me for not believing in the magical wizard that help you find your keys, that's where I have a problem. So I think that putting it sure. in the correct context here is kind of key. Yeah. I, I yes. think you were saying like, I don't um, begrudge anybody to, to say like, you know, there's, some design behind a sunset or whatever. I kind of would, you know, I, I, I would take home bridge with that. And like, at the end of the day, you know, you're right to, to, to point to the lottery is kind of an extreme example, but you could pick something that we don't have stats for. There could be an airplane flying over my house right now, whether or not that's happening. You know, it's, there's two options, but also not 50, 50 chance, very reasonable thing to happen. Something I don't have any stats on, but whether or not there's an airplane there isn't 50, 50. And so like, that's, that's the whole thing. I think what you're doing, I think you're giving too much credence to the validity of the possibility when in reality, just because something's possible doesn't mean that it's probable, doesn't mean that it's likely, doesn't mean that it's, you know, even, you know, anything within the realm of, of, of reason to believe in. Um, but uh, that's just me. Anyway, uh, we're going to move on to the next I, one, Sheldon. Uh, but do you have anything else before we wrap up? Um. Not really. Um, that, that was that was pretty much it. I, um, I I appreciate your time. Thank you. Right on, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, call back in sometime if you want. All right. Okay. Talk to you later, Sheldon. All right. Um, so uh, we have two theists on the line. One of them I feel like is going to be kind of short um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, I'm looking at uh, line number 14 there, John. Um, mm -hmm. 14, and then the, the number is eight. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump on that one for just a second. Is that cool with you? Yeah, that's good. Okay. And and the reason why is this. So this is Chuck, uh, no pronouns given, calling him from Florida. And before I bring Chuck on, I'm actually going to bring Chuck here into our thing. Um, Chuck, the reason why, I, you, you can hear me now, but we can't hear you. Um, we it, it says here that you're calling to say that religion is part of the extended phenotype of human beings. Um, I have an issue with that. We'll talk about it if you want. However, um, it says here you have given no pronouns, and that's fine. You don't have to. We don't require that for anybody. We respect people who don't want to give any. But I do have a note from my producer here that says when you originally called in, you listed your pronouns as attack and helicopter, which, as I'm sure you know, is just a shitty dig at trans people, at self-identification, at the concept of, of gender identity. Um, and it's really destructive and shitty. And so because you put that in there, to, just to begin with, even though this call wasn't about trans people, I just want to check before we actually start talking about religion or anything like that, are you just a troll to just looking for a reaction and just to be a dick? Or do you actually have something to actually talk about? You are now on the line and you can answer that question before yeah. we talk about anything else. No, no, I am not a troll at all. I really do have a, uh, you know, the discussion that I would like to have regarding the, you know, religion uh, as an extended phenotype of human beings. And I, again, I apologize. Okay. I wasn't trying to be provocative with that uh, statement. I thought, I thought it was, Okay, I, I feel like that's a bullshit thing to say, but it's whatever. We can move on. All right. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm oh, yeah. not gonna. Uh, I just want to. Yeah, I, I agree with John. That's kind of bullshit. If you've been, if you've been paying enough attention to the discourse around trans people for the past few years, enough to use that silly joke about attack helicopter, surely you know how hurtful that can be, or at least have some inkling that people don't like it for a reason. Okay. 
Well, I, I, I wasn't calling in to, to talk about uh, trends or anything like that. I really did have a question about religion. Right. And um, but you the, but you started with that. So I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. Do you understand why that's a problem and why you probably shouldn't do that in the future? Why uh, pronouns? Using your or, pro, why using your pronouns as, or listing attack helicopter as your pronouns is kind of a, a hurtful thing to do and why it's got a really problematic history and why it's just not a good... Do you have any inkling on that? Well, um, regarding pronouns, I, I... Or do you just I, not care? Um, again, <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not trying to talk about pronouns. Uh, we are I now. Think... So here we are. You can either talk uh, about uh, yeah. it at this point. Yeah, we'll, we'll take are... the rest of the call. I'm happy to talk about the other stuff, but because of your actions, we are now talking about it. So I'm asking you again, right. do you understand right. why that's shitty and why that's a shitty thing to do? Why it's shitty? Well, I believe that, you know, we have freedom of a thought and I'm not going to be thought sure. policed. I don't believe in nobody said training. you are. Well, yeah, you're, you're trying to berate me for a, you know, something I thought was humorous, but I, right. I the, the fact that you found it humorous is the issue. And the fact that you thought it was acceptable to put that on your, your thing when you called in is a problem. I'm not thought policing you. I'm calling you out for something shitty that you did. So I'm asking you, do you understand that that's shitty and why? Or do you not care? What, what, how should I feel? In, enlighten me. What, what, what emotion should I be experiencing right now? That's not my issue. Uh, well, I mean, we're not trying to tell you how to feel. You're looking for an outcome. What, what would you have me say uh, in response? Uh, give me an honest saying answer. Saying that I identify... Well, I would say that, you know, saying that identifying as an attack helicopter is a really shitty thing to do uh, in general, uh, considering well, not, the not, com not conversation. No, I'm not done. I'm not done talking yet. OK, it definitely identifies yourself as uh, at least partially transphobic. And uh, I mm -hmm. feel like, you know, making fun of the use of pronouns as a way to normalize, uh, you know, the use of pronouns, I guess, in, in this particular context um, kind of makes you at, seem very shitty just on a per, very personal yep. level. Shit. Well, this, yeah, this so that's kind of where we're at right now is that. All right. All right. Well, I've committed a thought crime. And for that, I apologize. No, no. No, once again, it, not, not, no, a thought crime. we're not doing it. Yeah, we're, we're not playing not into the whole, crime. there's no free speech anymore you, game. Here's, Nobody's here's, accusing here's you of that. The thing. Yeah, here's the thing. You did something that was shitty and now, whoa, there appears a wild consequence of your uh, actions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So th that's what's <laughs> happening right now, right? Okay. This is a consequence well, of your I, actions. We're not telling you we're, you can't be a yeah. shitty person. Yeah, you're welcome to be, just not on this show. So, like, you you use this quote quote joke, right? Something you thought was humorous. We're trying to get just an honest answer out of you. So you keep asking me, like, you asked, what is my preferred outcome here? My preferred outcome is that you give me an honest answer. Did you know that was shitty, or did you not care that it was shitty? Whether or not it's you not knew, shitty. or whether or not you cared. I consider uh, transgender transgenderism to be a mental disorder. I don't consider it a, ah, a legitimate So thing. here, so your issue is, you're calling in to talk about extended phenotypes and things. Your issue is actually with biology and the fact that like, this is actually something that we know a lot about now and that we have definitively shown is not anything to do with any kind of a mental disorder. John, you had something? Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, very obviously, if anybody hasn't picked up on it, he just flat out lied to us at the very beginning of this saying, oh, mm -hmm. I wasn't meaning to be disrespectful or, or a dick or anything like that with identifying a as a fucking attack point. helicopter. I mean, you mm -hmm. obviously lied to us. Why should we consider you continue a conversation with you since you're just going to lie to us anyways? There's no way that we can know if you're actually being serious at this point. Right. You just seem like a big fat yep. fucking liar. That's a very right. good point, okay. John. That's a very good point. All right. Well, it's up to you. I really just wanted to talk about religion. So uh, I do you really want to don't care because you started because you started the conversation before the conversation even started by attacking trans people. 
So like, I'm not going to sit here and have a conversation about religion with somebody who's going to be openly bigoted and go against science, go against the American Medical Association, go against the World Health Organization, go against the American Psychiatric Association, go against all trained scientists who understand that trans people are well, you know, valid in their identities and sit here and say, oh, no, it's this actually a mental disorder when I'm going to go ahead and just go on a limb here and say you have no expertise or no training in this area and start the well, conversation before the conversation even starts by being transphobic on our show. Okay. Well, uh, in the DSM-4, uh, uh, gender dysphoria- We're up to the DSM-5 a, now. We're up to the I DSM-5 understand. now. So Understood, in an outdated manual, in an outdated manual, they said something that you think means something that it probably doesn't mean. Who gives a shit? Well, the science evolves. So there you go. Yeah, science evolves. It's the reason why airplanes work. It's the reason why you're able to talk to us on the phone right now. So here's a question for you then, Chuck. Are you going to continue to grow with science or are you going to lock yourself down in the Stone Age and decide that, nope, science was right at this exact time in history and not any other time? No, no, so I, I, I'm, I like science. I, I, I very much do. You like so, science uh, because you're here saying that science isn't real. It sounds like you I like stories that go along with your worldview. <laughs> well, you have. I, I thought we were going to talk about religion. Uh, are we going to talk nope. about religion or not? We we I, would I mean, talk about religion if you hadn't started out by being a bigot. So now we're talking about what you did. You did a thing. And now we're talking about it. We're not policing you. We're holding you accountable for the shitty thing that you did. So again, you just said you like science. Why then right. are you in such disagreement with modern science? Uh, well, how, explain to me how I'm disagreeing with modern science. What, what do you mean exactly? I'd be happy to. So let me go ahead and pull up here. This is just the World Health Organization. Um, this is their page on gender and health. So this is who.int. I'll go and drop this tab into the chat so everybody can follow along. Gender, refer. Uh, uh, this is from the third paragraph here. Gender interacts with, but is different from sex, which refers to the biological and physiological characteristics of males, females, and intersex persons, such as chromosomes, well, yeah, hormones, or reproductive organs. Gender and sex are related to, but different from gender identity. Gender identity refers to a person's deeply felt internal individual experience of gender, which may or may not correspond to the person's physiology, uh, ph uh, physiology or designated sex at birth. So that's the World Health Organization, the best doctors and biologists in the world, saying that gender and sex are different things and they don't necessarily uh, align, that gender can be incongruent with sex. Why? Are you not believing what the World Health Organization says about the health of the world? All right, uh, because the um, the biological gender binary evolved for the a very good reason. It's because we're a species that um, reproduces sexually. So um, wrong again, there, Chuck. <laughs> Let me go ahead and pull there up another textbook for you. Uh, this one here, I'm actually going to share my screen, John. I'm so sorry. I'm. I'm talking so much, but let me go ahead and just pull up my screen here. This is my display capture showing now, and you can see here, this is Campbell's Biology. This is an actual goddamn biology textbook. This is the textbook, by the way, if you memorize about half of this, you get a, a bachelor's degree. That's what this is, it's just a really standard textbook in biology. And we're just gonna go ahead and click find and type in transgender into here. And here we've got right here, the biochemical, physiological, and anatomical features associated with males and females are turning out to be more complicated than previously thought, with many genes involved in their development. Because of the com uh, complexity of this process, many variations exist. Some individuals vary in the number of sex chromosomes in their cells, and others are born with intermediate sex characteristics or anatomical features that do not match the individual sets of their own gender, aka transgender individuals. So here we are again where science disagrees with you because science shows that trans people exist and that they're valid. They're valid in their identities. I can pull up another couple of textbooks for you if you like. Here I've got, actually, let me break around the room and grab this one. say that human beings don't reproduce sexually? Is, is science saying that we don't reproduce sexually? Or are you saying that men can have babies? Chuck, if you were paying attention even a little bit, you would have heard me say multiple times now that sex and gender are different things. Try to keep up, John. Here I've got my undergraduate genetics textbook right here. 
And this is from chapter 4.1. Sex is determined by a number of different mechanisms. And it says right here, it goes into a whole thing about how sex differences work, how sex isn't strictly binary, how there's different variations of sexual development. And then they have this little paragraph. Gender is not the same as sex. Biological sex refers to the anatomical and physiological phenotype of an individual. Gender is a category assigned by the individual or others based on behavioral and cultural practices. One's gender need not coincide with one's biological sex. So Again, for about the 50th time now here, science disagrees with you, John. If you like science, why don't you believe it? Why are you in disagreement with John. all of these major medical associations and all of biology? I, I think that there has been some kind of ideological capture in some schools of science, and I don't agree with all of it. So all biologists and all doctors have been caught up in some sort of ideological whirlwind. And that's why every major medical association supports trans people. And why also like all of these biology textbooks that I'm bringing up for you also mention and support trans and intersex people. Is that what you're saying to me there, Chuck? You asked me a lot of leading questions. I think you, are you doing a lot of virtue signaling here? What, what, what exactly? Uh, I don't understand. What I the, dare you the, to drop another right wing dog whistle. Uh, yeah. So here's the thing is what you just said is that the reason why you don't accept modern science when it revolves around when it involves gender is because you think there's some big ideological push what i just quoted to you are actual college textbooks and the largest medical organization on the planet and you're saying that there's some sort of ideological influence here how do you justify that belief and how is that any because different then when right. back in, like, I think it was the 70s, wasn't it? When the American Medical Association came out and said, actually, homosexuality is not a mental disorder. We used to believe homosexuality was a mental disorder. And then we proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that it wasn't. And a lot of people said, this is all this woke liberal stuff, when really it was just science being science. So how is what you're saying now different than what idiots were saying then? <clears throat> I don't think homosexuality is a mental disorder. I think it's a normal variation of but, human sexuality. But there was but there was an issue. There was an addition of the DSM that said that it was. So why are right. you okay with that science evolving, but not science regarding gender? Uh, listen, <laughs> I, I just don't <laughs> think uh, women could be men. I don't think you can, I don't think sex, is on a uh, nobody's is, is, nobody's saying women can be men, Chuck. We're saying that trans women are women and that trans men are men because woman and man are gender terms, which are different than things like male, female, and intersex, which are sex terms. Because as I've said several times now, sex and gender are different me, things. The, the sex and gender are the same thing. I, I don't believe that sex and you can separate sex from gender. I think you're male. So and once female, again. You are in disagreement with the World Health Organization and every major medical association in this country and also modern biology, as I've just shown you from modern biology textbooks, one that I used in college and one that I teach out of today. So college textbooks about biology, biologists like me, and also the best doctors in the country and the world think you're wrong. What do you know that we don't, Chuck? I I see I see the line of questioning. I got you. Okay, so you're you're really gonna just frame it in terms of uh, I'm some kind how morally disordered because I don't believe in this uh, ideology of gender and sex. I haven't brought up morality at all, Chuck. Only you have. I'm asking you no. why, if you are a person who says they like science, why are you in disagreement with the leading science organizations on the planet? about this issue is there any the other science that you don't believe in uh, there's there's plenty of biologists who don't agree with that when i took biology as an undergrad they weren't pushing that stuff this is very recent uh, when did you take to, uh, when did you take biology as an undergrad uh in the early 2000s okay so do you think in the last 20 years we've learned more things um, I think there's been ideological capture, as I mentioned before. There's a, so, an agenda. So you don't think that we've learned anything new about sex or gender in the last 20 years? No, I, I think, you know, we are still a species that reproduces sexually, and I don't think men can get pregnant. 
but you you're gonna play so, games. With so here we play. are again. So here we are again. You are in disagreement with the best doctors and biologists in the world. You are in disagreement oh, with not only all the universities that are teaching biology, but the biologists who write the textbooks for the universities. Professional biologists writing material to train for other professional biologists to train new professional biologists. You are in disagreement with those right. things because you think there's some ideology involved. And yet, yeah. when it comes to other pushes in this direction, other ways in which science has evolved, like homosexuality, for example, you don't seem to have a problem with it. So once again, you took biology in your undergrad. What did you learn that I didn't? What was the, what's, what's the evidence that you have that sex and gender are inseparable? That somehow the World Health Organization, the American Medical Association, the Endocrine Society, the World, American Psychiatric Association, that genetics textbook, that Campbell's biology book, those people don't know the thing that Chuck knows. So what is it? Tell me what it is that you know that I don't. Yeah, you're smart. I'm dumb. You're right. I'm wrong. You're you got it all figured out. So yeah, you're you got. I mean, it. that's a really Forrest lame asked, and cowardly you, answer, there, Chuck. Yeah, Forrest actually asked you a question, and you're you're is, you're just gonna try to deflect. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. This harkens deflecting. back to the very beginning of the conversation. No, no, this is, harkens back to the very beginning of the conversation when you just right out lied to us about insult uh, mm -hmm. about meaning to insult trans people with how you identify yep. as a fucking attack helicopter. So, I mean, honestly, I don't see any reason why anybody should take you seriously. But I would right. love to hear the answer to Forrest's actual question here, whether that's going to be a lie or not. My guess is it's probably going to mm -hmm. be a lie. I feel like yep. you're, this, this is not supposed to be a culture war issue. I was talking about religion, but you're, you're insisting on uh, making an issue here. But what, what exactly is your... There is no culture we war issue, Chuck. There is no culture war issue. I've... Sorry, go ahead, John. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I apologize. No, no, you're fine. I was just going to say, we're insisting on just uh, on, on just being respectful. I'm from North Alabama, okay? Yep. So, like, redneck being as respect. fuck out here, okay? And how, how I was brought up was to respect other people, and that would include however they seem to identify. You know, it's not up to me to dictate to somebody else as to how they should identify. It would be really difficult dickish of me to make fun of the person that just wants to correctly communicate with other people. Like what, here's, when did it become such a bad thing to want to communicate effectively with other people by providing the correct pronouns that you should use mm -hmm. when referring to other people? Like, I just don't understand that. If there's a culture war that's going on here, the culture war is coming from your dipshitty side. Okay, that's the only yep. culture war that's coming on because you have a war against just treating people fucking respectively, uh, re respectfully. And so I, that's the only problem that really exists here. There's no problem on our, on our side other than the fact that you're being a dick. You started off by lying to us and now we're not going to let that go. And you seem to be uncomfortable about that. I'm not I also want to throw out the fact that I dared I dared you to use another right wing dog whistle and then you just threw out culture war now. It sounds like I'm arguing with freaking Jordan Peterson. It's it's just it's disgusting. So uh, do I have to bear the cross of Jordan Peterson? Are you am I going to oh be Oh my god. Lambing? Holy shit. Like what it's, thought, it's insane thought, to me how much of a victim you feel like for just being held accountable for being an asshole. Like, it's, it's really wild. Like, you called in and said something shitty because for some fucking reason, you've decided that all the scientists are wrong about this one thing. It's like an anti-vaxxer. No. Yes, I know, I, no. I trust all medicine and I'll go to a doctor when I need chemo, but like, with this one particular vaccine, with this one particular disease, I think they've all got it wrong. I think I know more than all of them. And when we're sitting here presenting you with modern science, we're presenting you with actual, like, credible organizations that think something differently than you. You're like, no, nah, that's all right. ideological stuff. And on top of all of it, on top of you just flatly refusing to accept that there are people who are smarter than you on this issue, on top of that, you're going to throw out here, oh, you're thought policing me, and oh, well, I guess I committed a thought crime, and oh, well, you're just virtue signaling, and all these things, as if you're the wounded party here. When you called onto our show to be a dick, 
And now we're like, hey, why are you such a dick? And that's been this whole call. So like, honestly, right. dude, I don't get what your problem is. If you say you like science, like science. Keep up to date right. with it. Learn new stuff. Science is not supposed to be ideological, but I feel like I've committed it isn't. the crime of being uh, against your transgender ideology. I, not everybody has to there believe. There's no that. ideology here, Chuck. The evidence ideology. has shown us that sex and gender are different things and that they're not necessarily okay. congruent. That's why every leading medical association accepts that fact. Do you think that the leading medical, do you think that all these people who write these textbooks are just like, well, I guess we've got to talk about trans people? Or do you think that maybe biologists are doing biology? Do you know, have you ever heard of Lysenkoism? Do you know what Lysenkoism no, is? No, I would like you to uh, answer the question that I just asked you. Well, I believe that, uh, you know, science, like any other institution, is subject to corruption. I think this is just a function of an ideological capture and corruption of what science is supposed to be. I think it'll eventually and get so that's away, why. And so that's why, like, when people publish things in the literature and it gets peer-reviewed and stuff, that's that's what that's right. for, right? Is to help get rid of that. So why is it that now all of these major medical associations, including the World Health Organization, are all on a side that's different? Are they all corrupted? Are they all corrupt? Chuck, are they all just here? They're all been infiltrated by trans people and their allies. So that now all of these scientists have to differ away from science on this one tiny little issue. No, there's a push to uh, make, you know, this ideology capture the biological sciences. It 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 started in the the uh, you know, in psychology and the social sciences. Mm -hmm. So just out of curiosity, also, I want to ask, uh, you do know that that whole argument that you've used a couple of times about how, like, well, humans are a sexually reproducing species and all that stuff, you know, that was also used to try to keep homosexuality as a mental disorder, right? Well, listen, I, I'm not talking, I've already said that homosexuality is a normal variation of human sexuality. There's nothing. Right. But uh, answer my question, I'm Chuck. People used to say that humans are a sexually reproducing species and there's males and females and therefore homosexuality is wrong and it's a disease and it's a disorder. Why don't you believe them? Why don't you accept that argument, but you do accept the argument that because we're sexually reproducing that trans people aren't real? Because trans people have an extremely high rate of suicide. It seems to me like ah, a mental I see. So... So Chuck, let me ask you another question. Do you think that high suicidality is associated with being trans because they have some disease, some disorder, or do you think it might be because they live in a society where people like you are arguing that they don't exist and that they're all disease and disorders and that we have countless laws being try and try being talked about and passed in this country to influ influence their lives and to stop them from using a bathroom properly and to stop them from playing sports properly. There was a, say, a, a, a state not too long ago that literally the state passed a law about trans people in sports that affected exactly one high school girl because she was trying to play sports and she was trans. And that one girl got a whole law passed to ban just her from playing in her high school sports. Because we have commentators like Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro and the rest of them that try to dismiss these people's identities and call them disease and disorder and all these things. Do you think that there's a high suicide, uh, suicide rate in this community because there's something wrong with the community or because they live in a world where people are treating them as if they're all diseased perverts and questioning the validity of their identity and using dumbass pronouns like attack helicopter when they're trying to just say, hey, this is who I am. This is how I feel. These are the feelings that I have that are, again, supported by the best science that we have and supported by every major medical association in the country and the World Health Organization. These are the feelings I'm having, and people are treating them like dog shit. Do you think that maybe that has something to do with the high suicide rate in that community? Chuck? Why, why don't you answer that question? Uh, you, you, you're much more knowledgeable about this than I. Do, do you think that? 
Is that something that it's you believe? weird that you think that I am because you've said over and over that you don't care what science says your feelings matter more. So I'm asking I'm at, you a question. I would like you to answer it. Do you think right. that the high suicide rate that we see in the trans community is their fault or it's because they live in a world that treats them as if they are lesser than? I think the fact that even pre-op, post-op, they still commit suicide is pointing to uh, some kind, something uh, is wrong internally. That's what I think. I, I don't think society... You're not, actually, so you think you're that not, as soon as... Go ahead, John. Well, I was just going to say, like, you're not actually countering what Forrest is, has said or is uh, is trying to point out here because, like, <laughs> pre, post, what, 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 whatever point in in a person uh, a person's uh, treatment um it, they can still be you know uh, uh subjected to those same social factors that increase you know the suicide rate or in increase suicidal thoughts in people that are trans so you're not actually differentiating anything you're just adding more bullshit onto whatever lies you're trying to tell us right now also, I'm just going to throw this out there as if you give a shit what science actually says, just in case you decide to, just, you know, that maybe there are people who are smarter than you in the world. I'm going to go ahead and throw this out yeah. here. This is from the American Medical Association. This is actually an article published by the president of the American Medical Association, or at least he was at the time. This says every major because you brought up surgery. Every major medical association recognizes the vital role of gender affirming care in improving the physical health and mental well-being of transgender individual widely accepted standards of care and clinical guidelines lines recommend a stage process for transgender minors that enable young people to explore and live the gender that they choose while keeping options open. Studies have consistently demonstrated that providing gender affirming care that is both age appropriate and evidence based leads to improved mental health outcomes. Conversely, denying such care is linked to a greater increase of anxiety, depression, and self-harm. So you say it's before and after surgery. Once again, Modern medical science disagrees with you. Gender affirming care is life-saving care. And while yes, there are still high rates of suicide and depression in these communities, once again, that is demonstrating an external problem, not an internal problem. And you would recognize that if you were honest with yourself for three fucking seconds, Chuck. <laughs> so society... I'll go ahead and drop that link in the chat as well so everybody can read it. Right, society is wrong. Uh, it... Okay, I, I've apparently I know I have blasphemed against this ideology, and I for that I apologize. Oh my but, god! Uh, yeah, and really once again, Chuck. Yeah, I, once again, Chuck. Nobody's saying that, but you. You have a mental dodge every time somebody says something you don't like to say, "Oh well, I've offended the oh, the thought police. Oh, I've hurt their feelings. Oh my god!" When the entire time we've been here, it's been feelings over facts for you. Every major medical association disagrees with you. The World Health Organization right. disagrees with you. Modern biology disagrees with you. But your feelings say that, nah, this seems kind of wrong and icky. And it's not what I learned back in the early 2000s. So therefore, it must be incorrect. And when we're trying to demonstrate to you that what you're doing is not only incorrect, but harmful, you're going to come at us and say, oh, well, I'm the victim now because I've, oh, my God, I've offended you. And you're going to hurt me and take it out on me. No, you've just said something that's incorrect. And we're trying to educate you on it and trying to show you that smarter people educate. than you or I think that you're incorrect. Right. So why don't you believe so them? You why are these same arguments that you agree are bad for homosexuality good enough for you when it comes to trans people? Because homosexuals aren't committing suicide at the same rates as transgenders. There's they something... were when it was considered a mental disorder, Chuck. Suicidality right. was very high in the homosexual community when homosexualities were less accepted in society. When we began to accept them as a society, suicide rates went down. When modern science came along and said, actually, these people are not diseased, perverted freaks. They actually are just normal human beings trying to live in a way that doesn't hurt anybody. All of a sudden, magically, they stopped hurting themselves and killing themselves and feeling depressed and anxious as much. Same thing happens when trans people are allowed access to gender affirming care and societal acceptance. Study after study con call, confirms what this. You, what you call gender affirming care is really just castrating homosexuals. I see it as a wicked oh thing. Oh my God. Can we drop him? Right. All right. 
Yeah, this is the last one for me, Chuck, because I'm I'm really just sick of it. You need to read a fucking Ooh. book, dude. One that isn't written by some alt-right talking head. Because here's the fact of the matter. Every single thing that you've said in this call has been demonstrably wrong. Not ideologically wrong, actually factually wrong. If you read any, any medical publication on this or any book, basic biology textbook in this, in, in, in this, you will see that you are actually wrong. And what you've done consistently is not only say that you're the smartest fucking person on the planet and that all these doctors and scientists don't know what they're talking about, but also gone on to parrot all sorts of really, really toxic and harmful things that actually increase the rate of depression and anxiety and self-harm in this community. So you are actively not only being ignorant, but being hurtful to people that need to be protected now more than ever. So I don't know what the did, fuck you get off, dude, but it's ridiculous right. that you would call into a show about people who give a shit about science and evidence and inclusivity and equality and try to spew this nonsense you as if you're gonna get away with it and then be fucking upset when we call you out on it. Okay, you can call me out on it, but I'm not gonna parrot the line that you want me to parrot. Uh, you want to? No, I want you to educate yourself. I don't care what you parrot. I want you to read something that you don't already agree with for a change. Reasonable people can disagree. There's disagreement in science all the time. Not everybody has to follow doctrine yeah, or dogma. In, in, this, this in is my not classes, disagreement, though, this, this is, is not. not no, this is disagreement, like the level of what shape is the earth kind of disagreement. Yeah, we disagree. I study biology in my uh, job all the time. We disagree on how things evolved. We disagree on when things evolved. We don't disagree. We don't disagree on whether or not they evolved because we know that evolution happens. So when we talk about trans about people, we can disagree <laughs> upon like whether or not this type of care is necessary. We can disagree on whether or not these kinds of uh, th th policies are helpful. We don't get to disagree on whether or not these people are valid in their identities and that their lives matter and that what we're doing as a society is hurting them because those are all things that are actual demonstrable facts. So you don't get to disagree with facts, Chuck. You get to disagree with the implications of facts, but you don't get to disagree with facts. Anyway, with that, it's been 33, uh, 33 minutes of you just parroting transphobic talking points and telling us that we have an ideology problem when we're the ones following the evidence and you're the one just parroting Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro and all these other people who just say whatever the fuck they want to say because it makes them money. Uh, I hope maybe someday you go back to school and learn biology, Chuck, because it's learned we've learned a lot of shit since the early 2000s. Well, what are you going to do, huh? All right. Well, have a good learn time. something. Is me in a bag of shit? Yeah, that would be a great step. That would be a great first step. I am. Uh, Twenty minutes for. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk. Twenty minutes left. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I'm just. I'm not gonna fucking let that shit slide, dude. Thank you for for participating in that with me, John. I really appreciate it. Um, oh, and what yeah. what fucking? I mean, I know me. that you know you know. Yeah, you know way more about the the science behind like the gender and sex and everything. So I was uh, I was uh, very uh, edified on, on, on your rant there, but I don't know. I just can't, uh, if he starts off the call with a lie, then he's just gonna, he's just gonna be a troll the entire time. I feel like there's no way you can trust right. anything he's going to say. And that's what, what gets me about it is like, I know for sure, I would bet a million dollars that Chuck walked away from that call being like, Oh, well, I woke the, I woke up the woke people. I kicked the hornet's nest and all these blue haired liberals had to come out and tell me I was wrong because I disagreed with their ideology when like the entire call was just textbooks and quotes from major medical associations, people who know what they're talking about saying he's wrong. Like, yeah, but yeah, yeah but like you thought police and me. It's, it is insane how much of a victim a bigot feels like. That's what gets me is when you're sitting there kicking somebody on the ground, being like, yeah, but like they said something mean about me kicking them. So now I need to kick them more. They, they groaned a little too yeah. loud while I was kicking them. And that means they're the problem. Get, and I cannot stress this enough, fucked. <laughs> yeah, it, it's always amazing to me when people are have an issue with facing the consequences of their actions because that just seems like he he talked about it as if we were you know punishing him for you know thinking differently, but it's like no, these are the consequences of your actions. Like I mean, you want yep. to come on here and 
lie and then uh, act like you were stupid about the whole attack helicopter thing. And then, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you proceeded to go down this transphobic tirade where you just, uh, he just spouted off all of these talking points that you would hear from any Uh other transphobe out there. So that's what gets me. I don't know where I was going with that, but it's just, no, it, I think Sorry, you're absolutely right. That's that's what gets me about it. It's like every single time the dude spoke, it was, okay, well, that didn't work. Here's this other shit I heard on 4chan. You know what I mean? Like that was the whole thing over and over and over. Oh, well, they're castrating a homosexual. No, they're fucking not. And there's evidence for that. Oh, well, you know, humans only come in two sexes and we're a sexual. That's completely irrelevant and also not entirely true. So what the fuck's the point of what you're saying? Well, I just, I didn't learn it that way back in the 2000s. Okay, we've learned more shit about that since the 2000s. Also, you know, other things like homosexuality. We've learned more stuff about homosexuality since the 2000s. Yeah, well, they're right about that. But like just this one thing, literally everybody's wrong but me. And like just, dude, I don't know where the fuck you get that much arrogance. It's the same thing as the first call. Just the absolute arrogance to say everybody is wrong about it. I know the one way. The only way to pray is Robert's way. And the only way to have a gender is Chuck's way. And all these people that have demonstrated that that shit doesn't work, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They all did it wrong. Just, I, man, it's, uh, uh, if it, I think I would ask him to pull his head out of his ass, but I don't know if there's a crowbar big enough. We're going to move on to either line 20 or 16. We only have like a few minutes left, so I'll let you pick. Oh, um, let's, uh, maybe go with, let's go with 20. Yeah, dude. We've got Elijah, pronouns he, him, uh, calling in from Texas, who's a theist who wants to talk about secular morality. Elijah, you were on the line. How are you doing? Elijah, can you hear us? Going once. Going twice. And we're going to go and return Elijah to the queue. (laughs) Do we have another call? No. I don't know if they dropped oh. or if the other call dropped. Damn. Yeah, I think that call dropped. Back. Yeah, I think they heard us say, or maybe the, the producer was dropping calls. Either way, uh, uh, damn them. Well, let's we'll try Elijah one more time. Elijah, you're on the line. Can you hear us? Doesn't sound like they can. All right, well. Shit. I, think I chose happened. wrong. Yeah. Yeah, how dare you? <laughs> uh with that then i guess that's that's pretty much the end of the show then because that was our last call that was on the line um yeah. john I, I felt like this show was just me fucking screaming at people and, and i didn't get to hear too much from you i hope we get to do a show again sometime so i can hear more of what you have to say <laughs> <laughs> no yeah uh i enjoyed doing this show even if i uh you know only had a few uh you know things to add uh while while you were um you know masterfully handling handling uh handling both of those calls huh Screaming, oh, yeah. thank you. I, I, masterfully handling is a gr- very nice way to say hogging up all the all the air time. Thank you very much. No, no, I mean, I got to add what I wanted to add. So, uh, and I mean, like, I wasn't about to take, like, like, he wanted to have a serious conversation about, like, evolution and shit. And it's like, well, no, I mean, why you're going to start out the call with a lie? Why are we going to entertain anything that you have to ask oh. us? Like, also, anything. good. Th- thank you for bringing that up. Also, Religion isn't an extended phenotype of, of humans. That's fucking stupid. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. And there's a million reasons for that. Go fucking read a book. Goddamn. Go, go pick up just a Campbell's biology, dude. They, they have one called Concepts and Connections. That's great for like undergraduate, like introductory, like 1000 level early high school. You know what I mean? Like easy shit. Go pick it up. It'll talk about trans people too. Like goddamn. Yeah, um, I have... I have no idea what that could like. It just sounds like word salad that's put together. Like, I don't, I have no idea what he could mean by it. It's such a silly thing. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to go and wrap up then. Um, before we do though, I want to remind everybody watching to please support us on Patreon. And if you do support us on Patreon, then you get a special new perk, which is this awesome new show that is a Patreon exclusive. It's going to be released to Patreon and also channel members here on YouTube. But if I remember correctly, um, patrons get it like immediately and channel members here on YouTube have to wait like a week or two or something like that before it goes to them or something like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's an audio only podcast. Uh, one of the things that's going to happen in that podcast is that Jimmy, the snow is going to call us, us, the hosts, um, out of the fucking blue. 
um, and demand we answer questions. And if we answer those questions properly, uh, then a random picked, a randomly picked patron uh, is going to win some prizes, and that's pretty cool. So check that out whenever that starts happening, and join our Patreon so you can be a part of that. I think Patreon starts at like three bucks, so it's really it's not expensive. Um, we'll be but, we'll be playing you know, the preview can, of the podcast um, in just no, a few minutes. I don't know if if you all heard that. But I heard it in my ear holes is that uh, our producer for tonight, Morgan, just told me that uh, we'll be playing a preview of the podcast for everybody to see here in just a couple of minutes. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, you actually get oh, to watch and, some of it for free. Yeah, uh, and I do want to say a special thank you to our call screener um, uh, for it, yeah. was, it was their first night tonight, I believe. They're, they were very green uh, with doing it, and uh, they did masterfully. So uh, oh, they I did it great. Just, yeah. Th thanks to them. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, with that, um, that's about our show. But I really appreciate everybody tuning in. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for for uh, the callers that we did have, especially the ones that didn't get to talk. We really appreciate you calling in. I'm sorry that you had to wait in line for nothing. Um, we really appreciate the, uh, the 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 moderators in our chat. Uh, they're amazing. Thank you again to our call screeners. It's very cool of you. Thank you, Margan, for producing um, and all the rest of our producers as well. Uh, John, do you have anything else before you want to promote or talk about before we we end the show? Uh, I mean, if anybody uh, wants to come and, and uh, you know subscribe to my YouTube channel, I put out content weekly uh, and 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 stuff like that. Um, you know, I do some great stuff over there. Uh, so just uh, come and check me out. Uh, I've got I've got a live stream coming up on uh, on Tuesday night with uh, Dr. Richard Carrier, and we're going to be discussing the Kalam cosmological argument. And then, you know, we've I've got streams that go on every single week uh, over there on on my channel. So just come check me out. Oh, Hell Godless yeah. Engineers, my uh, channel. Nice. I think we have that in the in the chat. Hopefully, uh, yeah, there it is, right yeah. there. It's in the chats. Um, you can also go subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, uh, that's probably for the best. But like, if you want to try it, like, go for it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I put out videos usually once a month, um, and uh, the the sometimes more, but at least once a month is the plan. Uh, and this June, I'll be releasing a series of fundraisers. It's a pro uh, a thing called Roll for Initiative. Um, where my dear friend uh, Jesse Jerdak and I gathered together a, a group of influencers and we all played a game of Tales of the Valiant for like 35 solid hours. Um, and that's being cut up into, I believe, 14 episodes right now. Uh, and those are going to come out every week from June through September. Um, so go check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we're raising money for Doctors Without Borders, which is an amazing cause. Doctors Without Borders is such a cool organization of people who are so much fucking cooler than me. And they're the ones on the ground saving lives in Gaza and in Ukraine and in every other part of the world that's going through some horrible shit. Um, so if you're supportive of, of you know oppressed people and hurt people everywhere, please support Doctors Without Borders and do it using my thing. Because if you donate through the thing that I'm doing, we can track those donations. We don't touch them. It goes straight to them. It's a, through YouTube. Um, but it allows us to have those numbers. And then we can take that to a sponsor and be like, hey, we want to do this again. We raised however many thousands of dollars last time. Could you please help us? And it looks really good on that resume to try to get bigger charity events in the future so that you, as the super fan you surely are, don't have to donate as much. You can just donate some and then we'll have 5,000 other people because we'll get a bigger audience and they'll donate some and it'll be great. Otherwise, you're the one watching it. You have to donate everything. You will need $20,000 from you specifically and you don't want that. So so <laughs> donate what you can. Help us get the word out there. That's what that has to happen. Um, with that, uh, oh, and also we got the Recovering from Religion fundraiser coming up here on this channel too. Be prepared to give a lot of people a lot of money because they deserve it. <laughs> um <laughs> With that, uh, I think that's the end of our show. Uh, stay tuned for the uh, uh, premiere of the preview of the new show on Patreon. Uh, have an awesome rest of your day. Never stop learning. Goodbye. Yes. All right. Wait. So oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna reframe this because, like I said, we're probably gonna put a preview onto uh, the show today. So uh, Eve is about to play on behalf of our patron named Ram. Uh, and if Ra if Eve wins, Ram will get a a coupon. I don't know what to call it, a certificate to be able to get one unafraid of daddy uh, magical or other. And the full thing is unafraid to disappoint daddy magical or otherwise. It is the super soft T-shirt from our merch store. And if if you don't win, and by the way, by win I mean four out of the five questions. If you get four out of the five right. The shirt goes to Rom. If you don't, we'll still send Rom a $10 off whatever Rom wants, which 
for all I know, Rom would rather have that. <laughs> but uh, uh, a $10 off whatever you like um, from the store. So it's five questions. You got to get four right. Okay. And okay. are you Oh, I'm so ready? nervous. No, but let's do it. All right. Last week, O.J. Sure. Simpson, famous for many things, but mostly famous for getting away with murder, died at 76 years old, meaning that he got to live 41 years longer than his murdered wife. That's right. Jimmy's going to okay. use these questions sometimes to make points. Anyway, during his murder trial, <laughs> Johnny Cochran famously employed some theatrics with a little rhyme directed at the jury. You will now need to oh complete, complete the rhyme. If it doesn't fit, okay. you must blank. A quit. Yes. I before you even hit, yes, finally, I knew something. It, wait, finally, this is the first one, and oh. you got it right. <laughs> I just mean in life in general. Jimmy, <laughs> I already feel like my self confidence is increasing already. Hell okay. yes. Oh wait, I even have. Uh, uh, don't I have a? I, I've got a bell for when you get oh, right. Yes. Okay, cool. Wow, that's really going to make me feel so happy. I even did a little jump on my walk. I hope I nobody saw that. I will warn you, there is a there is an audio file if you don't get it right. Would you actually prefer air horns when you get it right, though? I could do that, too. <laughs> okay, I, I, won't, I won't do that again. Uh, sorry to anybody cool. ears, anyone whose ears I just blasted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, uh, on to question two. This one's the one I don't know if you'll know, I think, because it, it might be too specific. Uh, this okay. month, this month, and from when we actually recorded this, I think it was this week, but Amazon Prime released a new series and first season of a show that takes place on an alternate version of Earth in an America where nuclear energy and weapons have become much more prolific than our world. What video what? game series is this show based on? Okay, sorry. I'm just so excited that I know this one, too. Hooray! Because it's Fallout. Hell yeah. I don't know. We've never talked wow. about video games, so I don't know if you know video games. I'm I'm actually not a video gamer, but during... Uh, sorry. Watch. During COVID, um, I downloaded the app, the Fallout app. I don't know if anybody else played that. And Fallout was Shelter, obsessed. right? Yes, Fallout Shelter. And I had saw, like the cutest little Fallout and all these people. And every day I would like go check on. It was like my Tamagotchi, basically. Hell yeah. Um, I loved that game too, amazing. actually. So, but I want to see the show. I just saw it last night. I was like, oh, what? So The show. Anyways. So I watched the whole first season in two days. It's incredible. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. It's well, so good. That's on yeah. my list. Hell yeah. All right. Question number three. I'm going to say a statement that someone might use in a debate. Your job is to name the fallacy that is being committed. Oh, fuck. This is where I'm going to actually embarrass myself. Guys, I was homeschooled. Okay, let's hear it. Here we go. What would Jimmy Snow know about morality? He's a dirty atheist. Oh, is oh. is this a fallacy? Is ad hominem a fallacy? It is when, he, so first of all, uh, ad hominem Yay! is a fallacy when used to counter an argument. So when your cool. argument I'm, is I'm, I'm wrong because I'm a dirty atheist, you are committing the ad hominem right. fallacy. Um, fallacy. Okay, cool. Tremendously I often. I get it every day. <laughs> it's over accused of people every all the time, though, uh, that, oh, that's an argument from or that's an argument ad hominem or that's a ad hominem. And it's literally like, OK, for, for the record. I will always address the argument and respond to the argument. I might also want to insult you. So keep it separate. I'm not always committing the fallacy. I might say, okay, idiot, here's the actual definition of the term you just used. That's right. different. Uh, uh, so yeah. first of all, that is three. I'm going to give you three beeps. I need to fix that where Yay. I can do them in faster succession. Uh, I gotta, I gotta, yeah, that was a little slow. Fix that on my board because I have to like hit it and then let it finish. Uh, or, or if I, I have to double tap it or let it finish basically between them. Uh, so this is the fastest I could go. That was terrible. So I'm gonna fix that <laughs> so it can be more like the air horn. Bwah, 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 bwah. 
You have three points. You only need to get <laughs> one of the next two questions right, okay. and you will have. Oh, now I'm getting nervous again. One a shirt. The, I think the hardest ones are passed, but I, you will have won a shirt. Okay. For Rom, here is question number four. Multiple choice. Uh, I would like to also now mention that before this, earlier mm -hmm. in the podcast, if you are watching on the preview, <laughs> even I agreed that I was allowed to make these nuts jokes uh publicly i understand that people who are I, watching and don't know that she and i are friends might be like that's a weird thing to do uh we have agreed what were you gonna say we we definitely i was gonna say in fact i require it that's yeah. on my what do they call it like when you have a list of things you're you demand, like as an artist or, my writer yeah that's on my writer actually yeah. yep so uh and only <laughs> blue m m's in the green room uh uh exactly so the United States was recently treated to a full coverage solar eclipse for the first time since 2017. In what year will the next total solar eclipse happen on American soil, provided oh. that America still exists? Now, it is multiple choice. A, okay. 2029. B, 2039. C, 2049. Or D, He's nuts. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. Is this a trick question? Do people just like know this? Because to me, this is the hardest question of asking. So in the lead up, the reason why I thought you might is that in the lead up, a lot of coverage about it did talk about, hey, don't miss this one because it's the last one it's until uh, some number of years, basically. Is it? Well, I know that the next one at all is in 2026. And it's that you're going to be able to see it from eye point, I think, is the deal. Because I'm right. trying to go to it. But so I'm going to go with B, 2039. No, nope, that's the wrong one. one. Yes! Damn it. No, it was wrong. No. Oh, damn it. The, the, damn, the it board, damn it. Damn it. I accidentally put the ding on on the board twice. Damn it. That was supposed to be a buzzer. I'll fix it. I'm so sorry. Oh, no. uh, the answer. Well, then I should get that one. It's no. 2049. It's 2045. It's 2045. Uh, 2040, it, sorry, 21 years, one. even though the last one was a mere seven years ago, the next one is uh, 21 years from now in, on American soil, which above American okay. soil would be more correct to say. But I'm so annoyed about the I don't have a hey, I guess I have to use what do I have in the meantime? I could use this. That'll be the 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 bad sound for the moment. Yeah, now I have to get this next one right. See, this is what always happens. Is I do okay, and then I, the last one doesn't go up. Well. The okay, last one might this. be I'm tricky, sorry, but I, I don't know. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, great. In 2024, The Line, being the amazing channel it is, launched a brand new show hosted by Eve Was Frame and Alyssa Loop. The show is called Chewed Gum, and it's quickly becoming a fan favorite. On what day was the first episode of Chewed Gum? Was it A, February 20th, 2024, B, February 27th, 2024, C, March 5th, 2024, or D, He's Nuts? <laughs> I'm really upset that that's not the actual answer to any of these, first of all. Oh my god, I'm having to like dig deep back into my brain to figure out like what I was doing on these days because that's how I'll know. Because I know that the first basically it was like the first Tuesday I was available that Alyssa and I were both available next was like from when we all talked about this is when we scheduled it. So I'm trying to think. Mm -hmm. Don't don't you look in your calendar. No cheating. I hold on. February what were the first two options? I do know it was in February. February so 20th. And I will tell you all of the options I gave you are legitimate Tuesdays. So February okay, 20th, 2024. <laughs> uh -huh. February 27th, 2024. Or March 5th, 2024. Okay. My sister's birthday is the 24th. And I know it was after that because I was talking about it on her birthday and I'm having a memory of this conversation because having to tell your family that you are starting an atheist show when your family is all evangelical is always fun. 
So that's the 27th. Oh, I don't know, though. Is B your final answer, the 27th, 2024? Yeah, except now I'm like, maybe did we have to reschedule for March? Hold on. What was the other March option? March 5th, 2024. No, it's, it's B, is that 27th? Final answer. Oh, yeah. Except now I'm scared that you're using the wrong thing again. No, it's, I, I'm using both. You're correct. Oh my it God. was the 27th, 2024. Uh, you did get it correct. Rom will be getting a coupon to get the Unafraid of Daddy super soft shirt. Uh, and and uh, now I don't have to worry about what the consolation prize is going to be. I was going to, if you had gotten it wrong, I was going to give you uh -huh. a bonus question to let oh, you recover. Okay. Do you want to know what it was? Okay, good. That's it. I do. Because let's see if I would have. It wasn't going to be multiple choice, though. And it, you might have also okay. found it hard. So now I might be about to ask you a question you don't know the answer to. But the dates given to wow. you were February 20th, February 27th, and March 5th. March 5th was not yeah. the day the show started. But what was March 5th? I mean, a Tuesday. What do you mean, what was it? What special day <laughs> was March 5th? Oh, was it a special day? It was. Oh, God. Oh, Jimmy, this is your birthday, right? It was my birthday. Yay! I was like, <laughs> what special day was March 5th? God. <laughs> Not the birthday of one of my friends, I'm sure. <laughs> no. Disgusting. <laughs> oh, I remembered. That's I'm, amazing. It takes me years to remember someone's birthday, so. I am utterly, utterly touched. Rom, if you are listening to the show, uh, you or I, I'm going to send you a DM. Hopefully you get it one way or another. I'll send you a DM later today. Uh, and and yeah, that's, uh, that's the game. Uh, to people who might be listening to the preview, this is the game, but we've actually been going for, before playing the game, we were already going for more than an hour. So you've missed out on a lot of the podcast, but this is how the end of the podcast, the final sort of segment before. The other thing we do also is read comments from patrons. Now, uh, do you have time to stick around for that? Or if you, if you need to go, it's totally understandable. I Well, my my partner is patiently waiting in the car, and now we have to get to Laos. So I just had to miss that on this part. But that's all. Um, the totally next time I will. I, this is so much fun. Yes, I was just going to say the exact same thing. Go ahead. You may. Look it up. Yeah. No, I was just going to say I loved this. This is a blast. I'm glad that you tricked me. Um, I mean, I would have answered no matter what. <laughs> I also did feel like, wow, that's so nice that Jenny wants my creative uh, musings. And then turns out I was actually creating the content, not musing over it. So that's even right. better. <laughs> That's right. I know I, I will be looking for your input here soon. But uh, as as Eve is mentioning again, for those who might be only listening to the smaller part, I did uh, send a very sentimental and but true text about how I would like to uh, more routinely get together to bounce creative ideas off each other as we've been doing that recently. And it's been very effective for me and, and my thought processes. Aww. I, and so it I was think. true, but it was also a trick to make sure you would answer the phone. But today. it was also a lie. Yeah. No, it wasn't yep. a lie. Right. It was a trick. <laughs> it was I a wouldn't trick. answer the phone no matter what, but it was nice to do a podcast without me thinking that I was doing that before. So well done. That's well right. done. It's all right. You said no matter what, but but I I won't say who you were on the phone with, but you didn't answer the phone on episode zero because you were on a more that important phone call. That is true. To be fair, that I was like in the middle of a Zoom. That would have been a real interesting podcast had I answered it. That'd but great. Yeah, I did not. So. <laughs> can you guys, can you all <laughs> wait a so minute? Much. I need to uh, do this quiz. Yes, definitely. Right. Yeah, have, exactly. Have fun at Lowe's. I hope you don't get recognized and you can just have a peaceful time there. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on <laughs> episode one, which is weirdly the second episode because there was an episode zero. Thank you so much, Eve. <laughs> oh, actually, before you go, do you have a Patreon also? Not yet. I'm working on it. It's okay. happening. It will. Next episode that I'm on, that will be the goal is to announce that. How about I, that? I'm going to I'm going to call you and make you set it up this week. Just so you know. Please. I'll okay, help you great. if it needs to be because that, that needs to happen <laughs> for sure. All right. Great. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Jimmy. Talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye. Ah, oh, so content. Such a good 
episode one, such a fun episode one. I could literally talk to Eve for hours, for days, for months. Uh, and I get to because we are both friends and working together. And so it's going to be just a great, a great time in the future. And I, I feel that this was also just a great episode one. Episode zero was great for the record. Apostasy, thank you so much for being in episode zero. I don't want anyone to think that I'm I, I'm not super appreciative of uh, Stacy in the in the test episode. We'll definitely have Stacy back. Uh, but that was an episode where I was figuring things out. It was a little bit shorter. And this one has a little bit more of a direction, a little bit more of a routine. And I'm I'm as happy to see that as anybody else, to tell you the truth. As we grow old, we remember all the times we've had to get. No, as we close out today, I'm going to. I, sometimes stuff like that happens. Lyrics pop in as I'm going to say one thing. And I just kind of, I feel like I got to get them out. Uh, by the way, also, if you're watching the preview portion, the uh, little little segment, little, little gifty gift, you missed, I sang on this episode. So, uh, and I, and. For a, a line, I think one line we got Eve to sing as well. I tried to bully her into singing more, but to no avail. Anyway, I'm now going to be... So uh, we'll end the show out by reading comments from the prior episode, but the comments we were going to be reading are specifically from Patreon. So if you want to uh, be a part of, to have the potential of winning prizes in the future, like Rom won today or you want to leave comments, you want to be able to do the interactive stuff, there'll be stuff in Discord, and if you want to get the episode before everybody else, Patreon is the place to be signed up because they get the episode basically the day of or very within a very short period of time of recording. Uh, then we let it go out larger than that to our free patrons or our Discord-only patrons two weeks later, but those are all people who are on Patreon. So you can get the episodes for free just on a two-week delay, as a free member of Patreon. And then sometime, usually within about a week, it's going to be, we'll also release the episode uh, to channel members on YouTube. But if you want if you want it the quickest, the best way is to be a paid member on Patreon. If you want it uh, eventually, but free, the best way is to be a free member on Patreon. And if you are a channel member, you like the YouTube other perks that you're getting to bypass slow mode and all of that stuff, you will get it on a delay, but you will get it. So that's that. Let's read these comments and then call it a night. And let's see. So Steve had written, I hear you. This is the best episode zero ever. Monkey had a typewriter wrote, which when I first saw this comment, I, <laughs> I didn't remember. In episode zero, I shared a comment that had been left under uh, a show Matt and I did together where a person is chastising us for swearing unironically, but also swears in the comment uh, and basically requests that we swear less, to which they were told no. Anyway, Monkey at a typewriter said, Jesus fucking Christ, watch your goddamn language, Snow. What kind of shit is this? Stacy is a goddamn delight, and at least she can watch her fucking mouth. Good zeroth episode. Very funny. Love that. Hilarious. Hilarious. Uh, I'm going to go through and I'm going to heart these as I go to know that I've read them already. Uh, Steve also wrote, I don't remember what the word bouncy is in reference to. There's no video, so, uh, but it was a good, uh, good episode zero. You can go back and listen to that right now on Patreon, by the way. Uh, someone had asked, when will this be available on other apps via RSS feed? If you are a patron, you actually can put it into, uh, there's, you should have in the settings. I, I'm going to have to test this myself by creating a, a, a customer Patreon account and becoming a patron of my own thing to figure out exactly how to do it. And I'm planning to make a video, uh, but they give you a link. So you can actually put, even though the podcast is on Patreon, you can listen to it on your favorite uh, app. And there's also an option to listen to it on Spotify as a paid member. Um, but you just have to put that RSS feed into the app that you want. So say you wanted to add it to Apple Podcasts or wherever you put it in there. Mark says, so much fucking cursing, God damn it, y'all. Great episode, and go fuck yourself, Jimmy. I appreciate that. Jonathan says, I hope tech issues become a recurring segment on the show. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Uh, yes, well, we did have the tech issue of my buzzer being a bell. That was the wrong one. It was supposed to be a buzzer. It was supposed to go, Arr. uh, But I will have that fixed by the next one. So, you know, tech issues so far, 100% of the episodes. 
Reba says, can't wait to listen to this when I'm driving to somewhere. Amargan says, producing chewed gum requires a lot of attention to chat for the exact reasons Jimmy gave. Grow up, people. LOL. I feel that will be highlighted even more on this episode. Um, Actual Socialist Trash said, the day after the day before yesterday while I was at work, I was held at knife point by three badgers in trench coats. The gun turned out to be spaghetti, so I played an Uno reverse card and tripped the giraffe into a small box of roaches. Instructing a class on how to make a cake with raisins and lollipops is difficult. Uh, this was the consequences, I suppose, of saying, I'll read the comments out. Monkey at a typewriter says, okay, Jimmy, I'm broke, but I'm not super broke. If I just buy a VR headset, this because we talked about VR last one. Am I going to get, uh, am I going to have to buy like five subscriptions, three accessories and a bunch of software before it's good? Or can I whip this sucker out of the box and get a good value out of it? Also, any recommendation for first VR headset? Lastly, I get nausea with 3D glasses. Any way of telling how sick this is going to make me? All right, I've, I can answer all of these. First of all, if you want the best value, the Meta Quest 3 out of the box has amazing stuff. And I would even say, even just with free software, uh, free games, you can get your value pack. There's one called Big Screen. Big Screen is free and it is the app I use the most. I watch movies in there. Earlier, I watched the uh, the season finale of the show Invincible as though I was in an IMAX theater. Now, that did require it to connect to my computer to stream the screen uh, into it. But having that having that experience, the audio is very good. And it really feels the closest to having a movie theater experience, which is awesome because there are lots of movies that are different in like they feel different on a giant screen versus a little one. And for someone like me who doesn't like to go to physical movie theaters is amazing. As far as the nausea goes, almost everybody gets over it who has it. Not everyone gets uh, motion sick or anything. I also not only do I get nauseous with 3D glasses, I get migraines, but I don't with vr uh i did have a little bit I, i've been i've been in vr since the early days the latency was their big problem they had to solve and they've pretty well solved it so i would recommend maybe going to best buy and trying a demo or somewhere that has amazon has a return period try it out if you like it keep it if you don't like it return it but i uh i use vr i haven't been able to use it as much recently because of health stuff where I'm nauseous before I get in. But uh, actually, I still sometimes, though, will will lay back in my bed and put movies on it and stuff. I don't move too much. It's not a problem. But routinely, I, I most often live in a state where I'm using VR at least five to ten times a week. Randy says, well, that was fun. Call me sometimes. I, I appreciate that. But we probably won't be calling patrons on the show. But I do uh, I do appreciate that. I don't know. We'll see where things develop in the future. But it's usually a bad idea to call strangers in general, even people who are supporters. Um, but I appreciate that. Phil says, where do I find the RSS link? Again, I, I will do my best to make a video on that soon and release it to patrons. I would love a video that's just Jimmy's Donald Trump trying to do the ABCs. Stacy wasn't the only one dying, LOL. That's a reference to we talked, Stacy and I talked about how one of the times we called, I so I do bits for my friends, uh, like like silly bits, comedy bits, whatever you would call it. And I did one where I was I called her and I, the bit was that I was Donald Trump trying to sell a, like a Your Baby Can Read sort of thing where he's teaching them the ABCs. It's always A, B, C, D, A is for, they tell me Apple, but I don't know what an Apple is because they don't sell it at McDonald's. So I don't know. Uh, and I did the entire ABCs with her. And um, we talked about that. I didn't do the entire ABC. I, I did several of them, but not the whole thing on the show. But that was a previous time I had called her just as friends and, and just was doing that bit. Clayton says, you guys are dope and you do dope shit. I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. Azure says, I absolutely adore your personality, Jimmy. The first episode was a pleasure to listen to. We got to hear from a few awesome guests. I love forward to the next one. I'm sending lots of love. I think that means Azure did not finish the episode because we ended up not hearing from it more. I tried to get for episode zero, test calling a few people. Only one, uh, one person was actually available and that was Stacy. Zodiac says, if this counts, if this is episode count is zero, or if the episode count is zero, then does the episode even exist? I'm not a philosopher. I couldn't tell you. 
Casper said that song made me cry tears of joy. Thank you. That's got to be our uh, our our podcast song, which we will be going out on here in a moment. Uh, Clever says, I would like to dedicate a list of my favorite swear words to that one douchebag. Number three, douchebag. Number two, fuck. And number one, Dick O'Rooney. <laughs> Love that. And Jacob says, why is Jimmy's health like pee pee poo poo fart penis? Thank you for making that the last comment that we got to. Uh, the answer why is apparently genetics. Uh, my, my condition is, is a genetic one. Anyway, if you want to go back, if you want to listen to the entire episode, you're going to want to be over on Patreon. We talked about a lot of things, including some really off, off the, uh, what is the word? Off hinge? Uh, off the hinges, off kilter. Some really mess, like j really mean DMs I was receiving recently. Uh, I read them out. We talked about them. Uh, we did lots of stuff. We we had a a, a personal questionnaire for Eve, um, talking about different things that had frustrated us from theists and atheists recently, as well as uh, her favorite rumor that she had heard about Mormons' beliefs. She had heard about soaking. We talked about soaking. So. That's going to be the thing you want to do if you're listening. This is a preview. But if you're listening because you're a patron already, holy crap, do I appreciate you. Are you, a, are you just the best? Thank you, everybody. We will see you here. I don't know when. Oh, that's the wrong one. I don't know when uh, the next episode will be, but it'll be next week. Maybe it'll be this week. I'm having so much fun that if I have multiple good days this week, this week's going to be kind of messy with the health stuff I'm out on. But honestly... I, I'm having more fun doing this than almost anything I've done. So it could be very, very soon. Thanks for listening. See ya.